Isaiah 1 This is the vision concerning Judah and Jerusalem that Isaiah, son of Amoz, saw during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Listen, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have raised children and brought them up, but they have rebelled against me. The ox knows its owner, and the donkey its master's manger. But Israel does not know. My people do not understand. Alas, O sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a brood of evildoers, children of depravity. They have forsaken the Lord. They have despised the Holy One of Israel and turned their backs on Him. Why do you want more beatings? Why do you keep rebelling? Your head has a massive wound, and your whole heart is afflicted. From the sole of your foot to the top of your head there is no soundness, only wounds and welts and festering sores, neither cleansed nor bandaged nor soothed with oil. Your land is desolate, your cities are burned with fire. Foreigners devour your fields before you, a desolation demolished by strangers. And the daughter of Zion is abandoned, like a shelter in a vineyard, like a shack in a cucumber field, like a city besieged. Unless the Lord of hosts had left us a few survivors, we would have become like Sodom, we would have resembled Gomorrah. Hear the word of the Lord you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the instruction of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What good to me is your multitude of sacrifices, says the Lord. I am full from the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of well-fed cattle. I take no delight in the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. When you come to appear before me, who has required this of you, this trampling of my courts. Bring your worthless offerings no more. Your incense is detestable to me, your new moons, sabbaths, and convocations. I cannot endure iniquity in a solemn assembly. I hate your new moons and your appointed feasts. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you multiply your prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are covered with blood. Wash and cleanse yourselves. Remove your evil deeds from my sight. Stop doing evil. Learn to do right. Seek justice and correct the oppressor. Defend the fatherless and plead the case of the widow. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they will be as white as snow. Though they are as red as crimson, they will become like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the best of the land. But if you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. See how the faithful city has become a harlot. She once was full of justice. Righteousness resided within her, but now only murderers. Your silver has become dross. Your fine wine is diluted with water. Your rulers are rebels, friends of thieves. They all love bribes and chasing after rewards. They do not defend the fatherless and the plea of the widow never comes before them. Therefore the Lord God of hosts, the Mighty One of Israel, declares, Ah, I will be relieved of my foes and avenge myself on my enemies. I will turn my hand against you. I will thoroughly purge your dross. I will remove all your impurities. I will restore your judges as at first, and your counselors as at the beginning. After that, 
you will be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city. Zion will be redeemed with justice, her repentant ones with righteousness. But rebels and sinners will together be shattered, and those who forsake the Lord will perish. Surely you will be ashamed of the sacred oaks in which you have delighted. You will be embarrassed by the gardens that you have chosen. For you will become like an oak whose leaves are withered, like a garden without water. The strong man will become tinder, and his work will be a spark. Both will burn together, with no one to quench the flames. Isaiah 2 This is the message that was revealed to Isaiah, son of Amos, concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as the chief of the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and all nations will stream to it. And many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us His ways, so that we may walk in His paths. For the law will go forth from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Then He will judge between the nations, and arbitrate for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will no longer take up the sword against nation, nor train any more for war. Come, O house of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. For you have abandoned your people, the house of Jacob, because they are filled with influences from the east. They are soothsayers like the Philistines. They strike hands with the children of foreigners. Their land is full of silver and gold, with no limit to their treasures. Their land is full of horses, with no limit to their chariots. Their land is full of idols. They bow down to the work of their hands, to what their fingers have made. So mankind is brought low, and man is humbled. Do not forgive them. Go into the rocks, and hide in the dust from the terror of the Lord and the splendor of His majesty. The proud look of man will be humbled, and the loftiness of men brought low. The Lord alone will be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts will come against all the proud and lofty, against all that is exalted. It will be humbled." against all the cedars of Lebanon, lofty and lifted up, against all the oaks of Bashan, against all the tall mountains, against all the high hills, against every high tower, against every fortified wall, against every ship of Tarshish, and against every stately vessel. So the pride of man will be brought low, and the loftiness of men will be humbled, the Lord alone will be exalted in that day, and the idols will vanish completely. Men will flee to caves in the rocks and holes in the ground, away from the terror of the Lord and from the splendor of His majesty when He rises to shake the earth. In that day men will cast away to the moles and bats their idols of silver and gold, the idols they made to worship. They will flee to caverns in the rocks and crevices in the cliffs, away from the terror of the Lord and from the splendor of His majesty when He rises to shake the earth. Put no more trust in man who has only the breath in his nostrils. Of what account is he? Isaiah 3 For behold, the Lord God of hosts is about to remove from Jerusalem and Judah both supply and support. The whole supply of food and water, the mighty man and the warrior, the judge and the prophet, the soothsayer and the elder, the commander of fifty and the dignitary, the counselor, the cunning magician, and the clever enchanter. 
I will make mere lads their leaders, and children will rule over them. The people will oppress one another, man against man, neighbor against neighbor. The young will rise up against the old, and the base against the honorable. A man will seize his brother within his father's house. You have a cloak, you be our leader. Take charge of this heap of rubble. On that day he will cry aloud, I am not a healer. I have no food or clothing in my house. Do not make me leader of the people. For Jerusalem has stumbled, and Judah has fallen, because they spoke and acted against the Lord, defying His glorious presence. The expression on their faces testifies against them, and like Sodom they flaunt their sin. They do not conceal it. Woe to them, for they have brought disaster upon themselves. Tell the righteous it will be well with them, for they will enjoy the fruit of their labor. Woe to the wicked, disaster is upon them, for they will be repaid with what their hands have done. Youths oppress my people, and women rule over them. O oh, my people, your guides mislead you. They turn you from your paths. The Lord arises to contend. He stands to judge the people. The Lord brings this charge against the elders and leaders of His people. You have devoured the vineyard. The plunder of the poor is in your houses. Why do you crush my people and grind the faces of the poor? declares the Lord God of hosts. The Lord also says, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, walking with heads held high and wanton eyes, prancing and skipping as they go, jingling the bracelets on their ankles, the Lord will bring sores on the heads of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will make their foreheads bare. In that day the Lord will take away their finery, their anklets and headbands and crescents, their pendants, bracelets, and veils, their headdresses, ankle chains, and sashes, their perfume bottles and charms, their signet rings and nose rings, their festive robes, capes, cloaks, and purses, and their mirrors, linen garments, tiaras, and shawls. Instead of fragrance, there will be a stench. Instead of a belt, a rope. Instead of styled hair, baldness. Instead of fine clothing, sackcloth. Instead of beauty, shame. Your men will fall by the sword, and your warriors in battle. And the gates of Zion will lament and mourn. Destitute, she will sit on the ground. Isaiah 4 In that day seven women will take hold of one man, and say, We will eat our own bread and provide our own clothes. Just let us be called by your name. Take away our disgrace. On that day the branch of the Lord will be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the land will be the pride and glory of Israel's survivors. Whoever remains in Zion and whoever is left in Jerusalem will be called holy. All in Jerusalem who are recorded among the living. When the Lord has washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and cleansed the bloodstains from the heart of Jerusalem by a spirit of judgment and a spirit of fire, then the Lord will create over all of Mount Zion and over her assemblies a cloud of smoke by day and a glowing flame of fire by night. For over all the glory there will be a canopy, a shelter to give shade from the heat by day, and a refuge and hiding place from the storm and the rain. Isaiah 5 I will sing for my beloved a song of his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it up and cleared the stones and planted the finest vines. He built a watchtower in the middle and dug out a wine press as well. He waited for the vineyard to yield good grapes, but the fruit it produced was sour. 
And now, O dwellers of Jerusalem and men of Judah, I exhort you to judge between me and my vineyard. What more could I have done for my vineyard than I already did for it? Why, when I expected sweet grapes, did it bring forth sour fruit? Now I will tell you what I am about to do to my vineyard. I will take away its hedge, and it will be consumed. I will tear down its wall, and it will be trampled. I will make it a wasteland, neither pruned nor cultivated, and thorns and briars will grow up. I will command the clouds that rain shall not fall on it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are the plant of his delight. He looked for justice, but saw bloodshed for righteousness, but heard a cry of distress. Woe to you who add house to house and join field to field until no place is left and you live alone in the land. I heard the Lord of hosts declare, Surely many houses will become desolate, great mansions left unoccupied. For ten acres of vineyard will yield but a bath of wine and a homer of seed only an ephah of grain. Woe to those who rise early in the morning in pursuit of strong drink, who linger into the evening to be inflamed by wine. At their feasts are the lyre and harp, tambourines and flutes and wine. They disregard the actions of the Lord and fail to see the work of His hands. Therefore, my people will go into exile for their lack of understanding. Their dignitaries are starving, and their masses are parched with thirst. Therefore, Sheol enlarges its throat and opens wide its enormous jaws. And down go Zion's nobles and masses, her revelers and carousers. So mankind will be brought low, and each man humbled. The arrogant will lower their eyes, but the Lord of hosts will be exalted by His justice, and the holy God will show Himself holy in righteousness. Lambs will graze as in their own pastures, and strangers will feed in the ruins of the wealthy. Woe to those who draw iniquity with cords of deceit, and pull sin along with cart ropes, to those who say, let him hurry and hasten his work, so that we may see it. Let the plan of the Holy One of Israel come, so that we may know it. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who turn darkness to light and light to darkness, who replace bitter with sweet and sweet with bitter. Woe to those who are wise in their own eyes and clever in their own sight. Woe to those who are heroes in drinking wine, and champions in mixing strong drink, who acquit the guilty for a bribe, and deprive the innocent of justice. Therefore, as a tongue of fire consumes the straw, and as dry grass shrivels in the flame, so their roots will decay, and their blossoms will blow away like dust." for they have rejected the instruction of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore the anger of the Lord burns against His people. His hand is raised against them to strike them down. The mountains quake and the corpses lay like refuse in the streets. Despite all this, His anger is not turned away. His hand is still upraised. He lifts a banner for the distant nations and whistles for those at the ends of the earth. Behold, how speedily and swiftly they come. None of them grows weary or stumbles. No one slumbers or sleeps. No belt is loose and no sandal strap is broken. Their arrows are sharpened and all their bows are strung. The hooves of their horses are like flint. Their chariot wheels are like a whirlwind. Their roaring is like that of a lion. They roar like young lions. They growl and seize their prey. 
they carry it away from deliverance. In that day they will roar over it, like the roaring of the sea. If one looks over the land, he will see darkness and distress. Even the light will be obscured by clouds. Isaiah 6 In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood seraphim, each having six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling out to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. All the earth is full of His glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am ruined, because I am a man of unclean lips, dwelling among a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, and in his hand was a glowing coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And with it he touched my mouth and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your iniquity is removed, and your sin is atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. And he replied, Go and tell this people, Be ever hearing, but never understanding. Be ever seeing, but never perceiving. Make the hearts of this people calloused. Deafen their ears and close their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn and be healed. Then I asked, How long, O Lord? And he replied, Until the cities lie ruined and without inhabitant, until the houses are left unoccupied, and the land is desolate and ravaged, until the Lord has driven men far away, and the land is utterly forsaken. And though a tenth remains in the land, it will be burned again. As the terebinth and oak leave stumps when felled, so the holy seed will be a stump in the land. Isaiah 7 Now in the days that Ahaz, son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, was king of Judah, Reason, king of Aram, marched up to wage war against Jerusalem. He was accompanied by Pekah, son of Remaliah, the king of Israel, but he could not overpower the city. When it was reported to the house of David that Aram was in league with Ephraim, the hearts of Ahaz and his people trembled like trees in the forest shaken by the wind. Then the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out with your son Sheer Jashub to meet Ahaz at the end of the aqueduct that feeds the upper pool, on the road to the launderer's field, and say to him, Calm down and be quiet. Do not be afraid or disheartened over these two smoldering stubs of firewood, over the fierce anger of Reason and Aram and of the son of Remaliah. For Aram, along with Ephraim and the son of Remaliah, has plotted your ruin, saying, Let us invade Judah, terrorize it, and divide it among ourselves. Then we can install the son of Tabiel over it as king. But this is what the Lord God says. It will not arise. It will not happen. For the head of Aram is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is reason. Within sixty-five years Ephraim will be shattered as a people. The head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is the son of Remaliah. If you do not stand firm in your faith, then you will not stand at all. Again the Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God, whether from the depths of Sheol 
or the heights of heaven. But Ahaz replied, I will not ask, I will not test the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, O house of David, is it not enough to try the patience of men? Will you try the patience of my God as well? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin will be with child, and will give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. By the time he knows enough to reject evil and choose good, he will be eating curds and honey. For before the boy knows enough to reject evil and choose good, the land of the two kings you dread will be laid waste. The Lord will bring on you and on your people and on the house of your father a time unlike any since the day Ephraim separated from Judah. He will bring the king of Assyria. On that day the Lord will whistle to the flies at the farthest streams of the Nile, and to the bees in the land of Assyria. And they will all come and settle in the steep ravines and clefts of the rocks, in all the thorn bushes and watering holes. On that day the Lord will use a razor hired from beyond the Euphrates, the king of Assyria to shave your head and the hair of your legs, and to remove your beard as well. On that day a man will raise a young cow and two sheep, and from the abundance of milk they give he will eat curds, for all who remain in the land will eat curds and honey. And on that day in every place that had a thousand vines worth a thousand shekels of silver, only briars and thorns will be found. Men will go there with bow and arrow, for the land will be covered with briars and thorns. For fear of the briars and thorns, you will no longer traverse the hills once tilled by the hoe. They will become places for oxen to graze and sheep to trample. Isaiah 8 Then the Lord said to me, Take a large scroll, and write on it with an ordinary stylus, Meher Shalal Hashbaz. And I will appoint for myself trustworthy witnesses, Uriah the priest, and Zechariah son of Jeberechiah. And I had relations with the prophetess, and she conceived and gave birth to a son. The Lord said to me, Name him Meher Shalal Hashbaz. For before the boy knows how to cry, Father or Mother, the wealth of Damascus and the plunder of Samaria will be carried off by the king of Assyria. And the Lord spoke to me further, Because this people has rejected the gently flowing waters of Shiloh, and rejoiced in reason and the son of Ramaliah, the Lord will surely bring against them the mighty flood waters of the Euphrates, the king of Assyria, and all his pomp. It will overflow its channels and overrun its banks. It will pour into Judah, swirling and sweeping over it, reaching up to the neck. Its spreading streams will cover your entire land, O Emmanuel. Huddle together, O peoples, and be shattered. Pay attention, all you distant lands. Prepare for battle and be shattered. Prepare for battle and be shattered. Devise a plan, but it will be thwarted. State a proposal, but it will not happen. For God is with us. For this is what the Lord has spoken to me with a strong hand, instructing me not to walk in the way of this people. Do not call conspiracy everything these people regard as conspiracy. Do not fear what they fear. Do not live in dread. The Lord of hosts is the one you shall regard as holy. Only he should be feared. Only he should be dreaded. And he will be a sanctuary, but to both houses of Israel a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. To the dwellers of Jerusalem a trap and a snare. Many will stumble over these. They will fall and be broken. They will be ensnared and captured. 
bind up the testimony and seal the law among my disciples. I will wait for the Lord, who is hiding his face from the house of Jacob. I will put my trust in him. Here am I, and the children the Lord has given me as signs and symbols in Israel from the Lord of hosts, who dwells on Mount Zion. When men tell you to consult the spirits of the dead and the spiritists who whisper and mutter, shouldn't a people consult their God instead? Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? To the law and to the testimony. If they do not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. They will roam the land dejected and hungry. When they are famished, they will become enraged, and looking upward, they will curse their king and their God. Then they will look to the earth and see only distress and darkness and the gloom of anguish, and they will be driven into utter darkness. Isaiah 9 Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased its joy. The people rejoice before you, as they rejoice at harvest time, as men rejoice in dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian you have shattered the yoke of their burden, the bar across their shoulders, and the rod of their oppressor. For every trampling boot of battle and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish and sustain it with justice and righteousness from that time and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. The Lord has sent a message against Jacob, and it has fallen upon Israel. All the people will know it, Ephraim and the dwellers of Samaria. With pride and arrogance of heart, they will say, The bricks have fallen, but we will rebuild with finished stone. The sycamores have been felled, but we will replace them with cedars. The Lord has raised up the foes of reason against him, and joined his enemies together. Aram from the east and Philistia from the west have devoured Israel with open mouths. Despite all this, his anger is not turned away. His hand is still upraised. But the people did not return to him who struck them. They did not seek the Lord of hosts. So the Lord will cut off Israel's head and tail, both palm branch and reed, in a single day. The head is the elder and honorable man, and the tail is the prophet who teaches lies. For those who guide this people mislead them, and those they mislead are swallowed up. Therefore the Lord takes no pleasure in their young men. He has no compassion on their fatherless and widows. For every one of them is godless and wicked, and every mouth speaks folly. Despite all this, his anger is not turned away. His hand is still upraised. For wickedness burns like a fire that consumes the thorns and briars, and kindles the forest thickets, which roll upward in billows of smoke. By the wrath of the Lord of hosts the land is scorched, and the people are fuel for the fire. 
no man even spares his brother. They carve out what is on the right, but they are still hungry. They eat what is on the left, but they are still not satisfied. Each one devours the flesh of his own offspring. Manasseh devours Ephraim, and Ephraim Manasseh. Together they turn against Judah. Despite all this, his anger is not turned away. His hand is still upraised. Isaiah 10 Woe to those who enact unjust statutes and issue oppressive decrees, to deprive the poor of fair treatment and withhold justice from the oppressed of my people, to make widows their prey and orphans their plunder. What will you do on the day of reckoning when devastation comes from afar? To whom will you flee for help? Where will you leave your wealth? Nothing will remain but to crouch among the captives or fall among the slain. Despite all this, his anger is not turned away. His hand is still upraised. Woe to Assyria, the rod of my anger! The staff in their hands is my wrath. I will send him against a godless nation. I will dispatch him against a people destined for my rage, to take spoils and seize plunder, and to trample them down like clay in the streets. But this is not his intention, this is not his plan. For it is in his heart to destroy and cut off many nations. Are not all my commanders kings, he says? Is not Calno like Carchemish? Is not Hamath like Arpad? Is not Samaria like Damascus? As my hand seized the idolatrous kingdoms whose images surpassed those of Jerusalem and Samaria, and as I have done to Samaria and its idols, will I not also do to Jerusalem and her idols? So when the Lord has completed all his work against Mount Zion and Jerusalem, he will say, I will punish the king of Assyria for the fruit of his arrogant heart and the proud look in his eyes. For he says, By the strength of my hand I have done this, and by my wisdom, for I am clever. I have removed the boundaries of nations and plundered their treasures. Like a mighty one I subdued their rulers. My hand reached as into a nest to seize the wealth of the nations. Like one gathering abandoned eggs, I gathered all the earth, no wing fluttered, no beak opened or chirped. Does an axe raise itself above the one who swings it? Does a saw boast over him who saws with it? It would be like a rod waving the one who lifts it, or a staff lifting him who is not wood. Therefore the Lord God of hosts will send a wasting disease among Assyria's stout warriors and under his pomp will be kindled a fire like a burning flame. And the light of Israel will become a fire, and its Holy One a flame. In a single day it will burn and devour Assyria's thorns and thistles. The splendor of its forests and orchards, both soul and body, it will completely destroy, as a sickness consumes a man." The remaining trees of its forests will be so few that a child could count them. On that day the remnant of Israel and the survivors of the house of Jacob will no longer depend on him who struck them, but they will truly rely on the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. A remnant will return, a remnant of Jacob, to the mighty God. Though your people, O Israel, be like the sand of the sea, only a remnant will return. Destruction has been decreed, overflowing with righteousness. For the Lord God of hosts will carry out the destruction decreed upon the whole land. Therefore, this is what the Lord God of hosts says. O my people who dwell in Zion, do not fear Assyria 
who strikes you with a rod and lifts his staff against you as the Egyptians did. For in just a little while my fury against you will subside, and my anger will turn to their destruction. And the Lord of hosts will brandish a whip against them, as when he struck Midian at the rock of Oreb. He will raise his staff over the sea, as he did in Egypt. On that day the burden will be lifted from your shoulders, and the yoke from your neck. The yoke will be broken, because your neck will be too large. Assyria has entered Aath, and passed through Migron, storing their supplies at Michmash. They have crossed at the ford. We will spend the night at Geba. Rama trembles. Gibeah of Saul flees. Cry aloud, O daughter of Galim. Listen, O Laisha. O wretched Anathoth. Madmina flees. The people of Gibim take refuge. Yet today they will halt at Nob, shaking a fist at the mount of daughter Zion, at the hill of Jerusalem. Behold, the Lord God of hosts will lop off the branches with terrifying power. The tall trees will be cut down, the lofty ones will be felled. He will clear the forest thickets with an axe, and Lebanon will fall before the mighty one. Isaiah 11 Then a shoot will spring up from the stump of Jesse and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and strength, the Spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what his eyes see, and he will not decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he will judge the poor, and with equity he will decide for the lowly of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and slay the wicked with the breath of his lips. Righteousness will be the belt around his hips, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, and the leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and young lion and fatling will be together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will graze with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play by the cobra's den, and the toddler will reach into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. For the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the sea is full of water. On that day the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will seek him, and his place of rest will be glorious. On that day the Lord will extend his hand a second time to recover the remnant of his people from Assyria, from Egypt, from Pathros, from Cush, from Elam, from Shinar, from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. He will raise a banner for the nations, and gather the exiles of Israel. He will collect the scattered of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Then the jealousy of Ephraim will depart, and the adversaries of Judah will be cut off. Ephraim will no longer envy Judah nor will Judah harass Ephraim. They will swoop down on the slopes of the Philistines to the west. Together they will plunder the sons of the east. They will lay their hands on Edom and Moab, and the Ammonites will be subject to them. The Lord will devote to destruction the gulf of the Sea of Egypt. With a scorching wind he will sweep his hand over the Euphrates. He will split it into seven streams for men to cross with dry sandals. There will be a highway for the remnant of his people who remain from Assyria, as there was for Israel when they came up from the land of Egypt. Isaiah 12 
In that day you will say, O Lord, I will praise you. Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away, and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and He also has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the springs of salvation, and on that day you will say, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim His name, make His works known among the peoples, declare that His name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for He has done glorious things. Let this be known in all the earth. Cry out and sing, O citizen of Zion, for great among you is the Holy One of Israel. Isaiah 13 This is the burden against Babylon that Isaiah son of Amos received. Raise a banner on a barren hilltop, call aloud to them, wave your hand that they may enter the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones, I have even summoned my warriors to execute my wrath and exult in my triumph. Listen, a tumult on the mountains, like that of a great multitude. Listen, an uproar among the kingdoms, like nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts is mobilizing an army for war. They are coming from faraway lands, from the ends of the heavens the Lord and the weapons of His wrath, to destroy the whole country. Wail, for the day of the Lord is near. It will come as destruction from the Almighty. Therefore all hands will fall limp, and every man's heart will melt. Terror, pain, and anguish will seize them. They will writhe like a woman in labor. They will look at one another their faces flushed with fear. Behold, the day of the Lord is coming, cruel, with fury and burning anger, to make the earth a desolation and to destroy the sinners within it. For the stars of heaven and their constellations will not give their light. The rising sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. I will punish the world for its evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. I will end the haughtiness of the arrogant, and lay low the pride of the ruthless. I will make man scarcer than pure gold, and mankind rarer than the gold of Ophir. Therefore I will make the heavens tremble, and the earth will be shaken from its place at the wrath of the Lord of hosts on the day of His burning anger. Like a hunted gazelle, like a sheep without a shepherd, each will return to his own people, each will flee to his native land. Whoever is caught will be stabbed, and whoever is captured will die by the sword. Their infants will be dashed to pieces before their eyes, their houses will be looted, and their wives will be ravished. Behold, I will stir up against them the Medes, who have no regard for silver and no desire for gold. Their bows will dash young men to pieces. They will have no mercy on the fruit of the womb. They will not look with pity on the children. And Babylon, the jewel of the kingdoms, the glory of the pride of the Chaldeans, will be overthrown by God like Sodom and Gomorrah. She will never be inhabited or settled from generation to generation. No nomad will pitch his tent there. No shepherd will rest his flock there. But desert creatures will lie down there, and howling creatures will fill her houses. Ostriches will dwell there, and wild goats will leap about. Hyenas will howl in her fortresses, and jackals in her luxurious palaces. Babylon's time is at hand, and her days will not be prolonged. Isaiah 14 
for the Lord will have compassion on Jacob. Once again he will choose Israel and settle them in their own land. The foreigner will join them and unite with the house of Jacob. The nations will escort Israel and bring it to its homeland. Then the house of Israel will possess the nations as men servants and maid servants in the Lord's land. They will make captives of their captors and rule over their oppressors. On the day that the Lord gives you rest from your pain and torment and from the hard labor into which you were forced, you will sing this song of contempt against the king of Babylon. How the oppressor has ceased, and how his fury has ended! The Lord has broken the staff of the wicked, the scepter of the rulers. It struck the peoples in anger with unceasing blows. It subdued the nations in rage with relentless persecution. All the earth is at peace and at rest. They break out in song. Even the cypresses and cedars of Lebanon exult over you. Since you have been laid low, no woodcutter comes against us. Sheol beneath is eager to meet you upon your arrival. It stirs the spirits of the dead to greet you, all the rulers of the earth. It makes all the kings of the nations rise from their thrones. They will all respond to you, saying, you too have become weak as we are. You have become like us. Your pomp has been brought down to Sheol along with the music of your harps. Maggots are your bed and worms your blanket. How you have fallen from heaven, O day star, son of the dawn! You have been cut down to the ground, O destroyer of nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the far reaches of the north. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you will be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. Those who see you will stare. They will ponder your fate. Is this the man who shook the earth and made the kingdoms tremble, who turned the world into a desert and destroyed its cities, who refused to let the captives return to their homes? All the kings of the nations lie in state, each in his own tomb. But you are cast out of your grave like a rejected branch." covered by those slain with the sword, and dumped into a rocky pit like a carcass trampled underfoot. You will not join them in burial, since you have destroyed your land and slaughtered your own people. The offspring of the wicked will never again be mentioned. Prepare a place to slaughter his sons for the iniquities of their forefathers." They will never rise up to possess a land or cover the earth with their cities. I will rise up against them, declares the Lord of hosts. I will cut off from Babylon her name and her remnant, her offspring and her posterity, declares the Lord. I will make her a place for owls and for swamplands. I will sweep her away with the broom of destruction, declares the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts has sworn, Surely as I have planned, so will it be. As I have purposed, so will it stand. I will break Assyria in my land. I will trample him on my mountain. His yoke will be taken off my people, and his burden removed from their shoulders. This is the plan devised for the whole earth, and this is the hand stretched out over all the nations. The Lord of hosts has purposed, and who can thwart him? His hand is outstretched, so who can turn it back? In the year that King Ahaz died, this burden was received. Do not rejoice, all you Philistines, that the rod that struck you is broken. 
For a viper will spring from the root of the snake, and a flying serpent from its egg. Then the firstborn of the poor will find pasture, and the needy will lie down in safety. But I will kill your root by famine, and your remnant will be slain. Wail, O gate, cry out, O city, melt away, all you Philistines. For a cloud of smoke comes from the north, and there are no stragglers in its ranks. What answer will be given to the envoys of that nation? The Lord has founded Zion, where his afflicted people will find refuge. Isaiah 15 This is the burden against Moab. Ar in Moab is ruined, destroyed in a night. Ker in Moab is devastated, destroyed in a night. Dibon goes up to its temple to weep at its high places. Moab wails over Nebo as well as over Medaba. Every head is shaved, every beard is cut off. In its streets they wear sackcloth. On the rooftops and in the public squares they all wail, falling down weeping. Heshbon and Eliela cry out. Their voices are heard as far as Jahaz. Therefore the soldiers of Moab cry out. Their souls tremble within. My heart cries out over Moab. Her fugitives flee as far as Zoar, as far as eglath Shalishia. With weeping, they ascend the slope of Luhith. They lament their destruction on the road to Horonaim. The waters of Nimrim are dried up, and the grass is withered. The vegetation is gone, and the greenery is no more. So they carry their wealth and belongings over the brook of the willows. For their outcry echoes to the border of Moab. Their wailing reaches Eglaim. It is heard in Beer Elim. The waters of Diamond are full of blood. But I will bring more upon Diamond, a lion upon the fugitives of Moab and upon the remnant of the land. Isaiah 16 Send the tribute lambs to the ruler of the land, from Selah in the desert to the mount of daughter Zion. Like fluttering birds pushed out of the nest, so are the daughters of Moab at the fords of the Arnon. Give us counsel, render a decision. Shelter us at noonday with shade as dark as night. Hide the refugees. Do not betray the one who flees. Let my fugitives stay with you. Be a refuge for Moab from the destroyer. When the oppressor has gone, destruction has ceased, and the oppressors have vanished from the land. In loving devotion, a throne will be established in the tent of David. A judge, seeking justice and hastening righteousness, will sit on it in faithfulness. We have heard of Moab's pomposity, his exceeding pride and conceit, his overflowing arrogance. But his boasting is empty. Therefore, let Moab wail. Let them wail together for Moab. Moan for the raisin cakes of ker you who are utterly stricken. For the fields of Heshbon have withered, along with the grapevines of Sibma. The rulers of the nations have trampled its choicest vines, which had reached as far as Jazer and spread toward the desert. Their shoots had spread out and passed over the sea. So I weep with Jazer for the vines of Sibma. I drench Heshbon and Eliela with my tears. Triumphant shouts have fallen silent over your summer fruit and your harvest. Joy and gladness are removed from the orchard. No one sings or shouts in the vineyards. No one tramples the grapes in the wine presses. I have put an end to the cheering. Therefore my heart laments for Moab like a harp, my inmost being for ker When Moab appears on the high place, when he wearies himself and enters his sanctuary to pray, 
it will do him no good. This is the message that the Lord spoke earlier concerning Moab. And now the Lord says, In three years, as a hired worker counts the years, Moab's splendor will become an object of contempt with all her many people, and those who are left will be few and feeble. Isaiah 17 This is the burden against Damascus. Behold, Damascus is no longer a city. It has become a heap of ruins. The cities of Aroer are forsaken. They will be left to the flocks, which will lie down with no one to fear. The fortress will disappear from Ephraim, and the sovereignty from Damascus. The remnant of Aram will be like the splendor of the Israelites, declares the Lord of hosts. In that day the splendor of Jacob will fade, and the fat of his body will waste away, as the reaper gathers the standing grain and harvests the ears with his arm, as one gleans heads of grain in the valley of Rephaim. Yet gleanings will remain, like an olive tree that has been beaten, two or three berries atop the tree, four or five on its fruitful branches, declares the Lord, the God of Israel. In that day men will look to their Maker, and turn their eyes to the Holy One of Israel. They will not look to the altars they have fashioned with their hands, or to the Asherahs and incense altars they have made with their fingers. In that day their strong cities will be like forsaken thickets and summits, abandoned to the Israelites and to utter desolation. For you have forgotten the God of your salvation, and failed to remember the rock of your refuge. Therefore, though you cultivate delightful plots, and set out cuttings from exotic vines, though on the day you plant you make them grow, and on that morning you help your seed sprout, yet the harvest will vanish on the day of disease and incurable pain. Alas, the tumult of many peoples! They rage like the roaring seas and clamoring nations. They rumble like the crashing of mighty waters. The nations rage like the rush of many waters. He rebukes them, and they flee far away, driven before the wind like chaff on the hills, like tumbleweeds before a gale. In the evening there is sudden terror. Before morning they are no more. This is the portion of those who loot us, and the lot of those who plunder us. Isaiah 18 Woe to the land of whirring wings along the rivers of Cush, which sends couriers by sea in papyrus vessels on the waters. Go, swift messengers, to a people tall and smooth-skinned, to a people widely feared, to a powerful nation of strange speech whose land is divided by rivers. All you people of the world and dwellers of the earth, when a banner is raised on the mountains, you will see it. When a ram's horn sounds, you will hear it. For this is what the Lord has told me. I will quietly look on from my dwelling place, like shimmering heat in the sunshine, like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. For before the harvest, when the blossom is gone, and the flower becomes a ripening grape, he will cut off the shoots with a pruning knife, and remove and discard the branches. They will all be left to the mountain birds of prey, and to the beasts of the land. The birds will feed on them in summer, and all the wild animals in winter. At that time gifts will be brought to the Lord of hosts, from a people tall and smooth-skinned, from a people widely feared, from a powerful nation of strange speech, whose land is divided by rivers, to Mount Zion, the place of the name of the Lord of hosts. Isaiah 19 This is the burden against Egypt. 
Behold, the Lord rides on a swift cloud. He is coming to Egypt. The idols of Egypt will tremble before him, and the hearts of the Egyptians will melt within them. So I will incite Egyptian against Egyptian. Brother will fight against brother, neighbor against neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. Then the spirit of the Egyptians will be emptied out from among them, and I will frustrate their plans, so that they will resort to idols and spirits of the dead, to mediums and spiritists. I will deliver the Egyptians into the hands of harsh masters, and a fierce king will rule over them, declares the Lord God of hosts. The waters of the Nile will dry up, and the riverbed will be parched and empty. The canals will stink. The streams of Egypt will trickle and dry up. The reeds and rushes will wither. The bulrushes by the Nile, by the mouth of the river, and all the fields sown along the Nile, will wither, blow away, and be no more. Then the fishermen will mourn. All who cast a hook into the Nile will lament and those who spread nets on the waters will pine away. The workers in flax will be dismayed, and the weavers of fine linen will turn pale. The workers in cloth will be dejected, and all the hired workers will be sick at heart. The princes of Zoan are mere fools. Pharaoh's wise counselors give senseless advice. How can you say to Pharaoh, I am one of the wise, a son of eastern kings. Where are your wise men now? Let them tell you and reveal what the Lord of hosts has planned against Egypt. The princes of Zoan have become fools. The princes of Memphis are deceived. The cornerstones of her tribes have led Egypt astray. The Lord has poured into her a spirit of confusion. Egypt has been led astray in all she does, as a drunkard staggers through his own vomit. There is nothing Egypt can do, head or tail, palm or reed. In that day the Egyptians will be like women. They will tremble with fear beneath the uplifted hand of the Lord of hosts when he brandishes it against them. The land of Judah will bring terror to Egypt. Whenever Judah is mentioned, Egypt will tremble over what the Lord of hosts has planned against it. In that day, five cities in the land of Egypt will speak the language of Canaan and swear allegiance to the Lord of hosts. One of them will be called the City of the Sun. In that day, there will be an altar to the Lord in the center of the land of Egypt and a pillar to the Lord near her border. It will be a sign and a witness to the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. When they cry out to the Lord because of their oppressors, He will send them a Savior and Defender to rescue them. The Lord will make Himself known to Egypt, and on that day Egypt will acknowledge the Lord. They will worship with sacrifices and offerings. They will make vows to the Lord and fulfill them. And the Lord will strike Egypt with a plague. He will strike them, but heal them. They will turn to the Lord, and He will hear their prayers and heal them. In that day there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria. The Assyrians will go to Egypt and the Egyptians to Assyria. The Egyptians and Assyrians will worship together. In that day, Israel will join a three-party alliance with Egypt and Assyria, a blessing upon the earth. The Lord of hosts will bless them, saying, Blessed be Egypt my people, Assyria my handiwork, and Israel my inheritance. Isaiah 20 Before the year that the chief commander, sent by Sargon king of Assyria, came to Ashdod and attacked and captured it. The Lord had already spoken through Isaiah, son of Amoz, saying, Go, remove the sackcloth from your waist 
and the sandals from your feet. And Isaiah did so, walking around naked and barefoot. Then the Lord said, Just as my servant Isaiah has gone naked and barefoot for three years as a sign and omen against Egypt and Cush, so the king of Assyria will lead away the captives of Egypt and the exiles of Cush, young and old alike, naked and barefoot, with bared buttocks, to Egypt's shame. Those who made Cush their hope and Egypt their boast will be dismayed and ashamed. And on that day the dwellers of this coastland will say, See what has happened to our source of hope those to whom we fled for help and deliverance from the king of Assyria. How then can we escape? Isaiah 21 This is the burden against the desert by the sea. Like whirlwinds sweeping through the Negev, an invader comes from the desert, from a land of terror. A dire vision is declared to me. The traitor still betrays, and the destroyer still destroys. Go up, O Elam, lay siege, O Media. I will put an end to all her groaning. Therefore my body is filled with anguish. Pain grips me like the pains of a woman in labor. I am bewildered to hear. I am dismayed to see. My heart falters. Fear makes me tremble. The twilight of my desire has turned to horror. They prepare a table, they lay out a carpet, they eat, they drink. Rise up, O princes, oil the shields, for this is what the Lord says to me. Go, post a lookout, and have him report what he sees. When he sees chariots with teams of horsemen, riders on donkeys, riders on camels, he must be alert fully alert. Then the lookout shouted, Day after day, my lord, I stand on the watchtower. Night after night I stay at my post. Look, here come the riders, horsemen in pairs. And one answered, saying, Fallen, fallen is Babylon. All the images of her gods lie shattered on the ground. O oh, my people, crushed on the threshing floor, I tell you what I have heard from the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. This is the burden against Duma. One calls to me from Seir. Watchman, what is left of the night? Watchman, what is left of the night? The watchman replies, Morning has come, but also the night. If you would inquire, then inquire. Come back yet again. This is the burden against Arabia. In the thickets of Arabia you must lodge, O caravans of Dedanites. Bring water for the thirsty, O dwellers of Tima. Meet the refugees with food. For they flee from the sword, the sword that is drawn, from the bow that is bent, and from the stress of battle. For this is what the Lord says to me. Within one year, as a hired worker would count it, all the glory of Kedar will be gone. The remaining archers, the warriors of Kedar, will be few. For the Lord, the God of Israel, has spoken. Isaiah 22 This is the burden against the valley of vision. What ails you now that you have all gone up to the rooftops, O city of commotion, O town of revelry? Your slain did not die by the sword, nor were they killed in battle. All your rulers have fled together, captured without a bow. All your fugitives were captured together, having fled to a distant place. Therefore I said, Turn away from me. Let me weep bitterly. Do not try to console me over the destruction of the daughter of my people. For the Lord God of hosts has set a day of tumult and trampling and confusion in the valley of vision, of breaking down the walls and crying to the mountains. Elam takes up a quiver 
with chariots and horsemen, and Ker uncovers the shield. Your choicest valleys are full of chariots, and horsemen are posted at the gates. He has uncovered the defenses of Judah. On that day you looked to the weapons in the house of the forest. You saw that there were many breaches in the walls of the city of David. You collected water from the lower pool. You counted the houses of Jerusalem and tore them down to strengthen the wall. You built a reservoir between the walls for the waters of the ancient pool. But you did not look to the one who made it, or consider him who planned it long ago. On that day the Lord God of hosts called for weeping and wailing, for shaven heads and the wearing of sackcloth. But look, there is joy and gladness, butchering of cattle and slaughtering of sheep, eating of meat and drinking of wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. The Lord of hosts has revealed in my hearing, Until your dying day this sin of yours will never be atoned for, says the Lord God of hosts. This is what the Lord God of hosts says. Go, say to Shebna, the steward in charge of the palace, What are you doing here, and who authorized you to carve out a tomb for yourself here, to chisel your tomb in the height and cut your resting place in the rock? Look, O mighty man, the Lord is about to shake you violently. He will take hold of you, roll you into a ball, and sling you into a wide land. There you will die, and there your glorious chariots will remain, a disgrace to the house of your master. I will remove you from office, and you will be ousted from your position. On that day I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and tie your sash around him. I will put your authority in his hand, and he will be a father to the dwellers of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place on his shoulder the key to the house of David. What he opens no one can shut, and what he shuts no one can open. I will drive him like a peg into a firm place, and he will be a throne of glory for the house of his father." so they will hang on him the whole burden of his father's house, the descendants and the offshoots, all the lesser vessels, from bowls to every kind of jar. In that day, declares the Lord of hosts, the peg driven into a firm place will give way. It will be sheared off and fall, and the load upon it will be cut down. Indeed, the Lord has spoken." Isaiah 23 This is the burden against Tyre. Wail, O ships of Tarshish, for Tyre is laid waste without house or harbor. Word has reached them from the land of Cyprus. Be silent, O dwellers of the coastland, you merchants of Sidon, whose traders have crossed the sea. On the great waters came the grain of Shihor, the harvest of the Nile was the revenue of Tyre. She was the merchant of the nations. Be ashamed, O Sidon, the stronghold of the sea, for the sea has spoken. I have not been in labor or given birth. I have not raised young men or brought up young women. When the report reaches Egypt, they will writhe in agony over the news of Tyre. Cross over to Tarshish, wail, O inhabitants of the coastland. Is this your jubilant city, whose origin is from antiquity, whose feet have taken her to settle far away? Who planned this against Tyre, the bestower of crowns, whose traders are princes, whose merchants are renowned on the earth? The Lord of hosts planned it, to defile all its glorious beauty to disgrace all the renowned of the earth. Cultivate your land like the Nile, O daughter of Tarshish. There is no longer a harbor. 
The Lord has stretched out His hand over the sea. He has made kingdoms tremble. He has given a command that the strongholds of Canaan be destroyed. He said, You shall rejoice no more, O oppressed virgin daughter of Sidon. Get up and cross over to Cyprus. Even there you will find no rest. Look at the land of the Chaldeans, a people now of no account. The Assyrians destined it for the desert creatures. They set up their siege towers and stripped its palaces. They brought it to ruin. Wail, O ships of Tarshish, for your harbor has been destroyed. At that time Tyre will be forgotten for seventy years, the span of a king's life. But at the end of seventy years it will happen to Tyre as in the song of the harlot. Take up your harp, stroll through the city, O forgotten harlot. Make sweet melody, sing many a song, so you will be remembered. And at the end of seventy years the Lord will restore Tyre. Then she will return to hire as a prostitute, and sell herself to all the kingdoms on the face of the earth. Yet her profits and wages will be set apart to the Lord. They will not be stored or saved, for her profit will go to those who live before the Lord, for abundant food and fine clothing. Isaiah 24 Behold, the Lord lays waste the earth and leaves it in ruins. He will twist its surface and scatter its inhabitants, people and priest alike, servant and master, maid and mistress, buyer and seller, lender and borrower, creditor and debtor. The earth will be utterly laid waste and thoroughly plundered, for the Lord has spoken this word. The earth mourns and withers, the world languishes and fades, the exalted of the earth waste away. The earth is defiled by its people. They have transgressed the laws. They have overstepped the decrees and broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore a curse has consumed the earth, and its inhabitants must bear the guilt. The earth's dwellers have been burned, and only a few survive. The new wine dries up, the vine withers, all the merrymakers now groan. The joyful tambourines have ceased, the noise of revelers has stopped, the joyful harp is silent. They no longer sing and drink wine. Strong drink is bitter to those who consume it. The city of chaos is shattered, every house is closed to entry. In the streets they cry out for wine. All joy turns to gloom. Rejoicing is exiled from the land. The city is left in ruins. Its gate is reduced to rubble. So it will be on the earth and among the nations, like a harvested olive tree, like a gleaning after a grape harvest. They raise their voices. They shout for joy. From the west they proclaim the majesty of the Lord. Therefore glorify the Lord in the east. Extol the name of the Lord, the God of Israel, in the islands of the sea. From the ends of the earth we hear singing, Glory to the Righteous One. But I said, I am wasting away, I am wasting away. Woe is me! The treacherous betray, the treacherous deal in treachery. Terror and pit and snare await you, O dweller of the earth. Whoever flees the sound of panic will fall into the pit, and whoever climbs from the pit will be caught in the snare. For the windows of heaven are open, and the foundations of the earth are shaken. The earth is utterly broken apart, the earth is split open, the earth is shaken violently. The earth staggers like a drunkard and sways like a shack. Earth's rebellion weighs it down, and it falls never to rise again. 
In that day the Lord will punish the host of heaven above and the kings of the earth below. They will be gathered together like prisoners in a pit. They will be confined to a dungeon and punished after many days. The moon will be confounded and the sun will be ashamed. For the Lord of hosts will reign on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his elders with great glory. Isaiah 25 O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have worked wonders, plans formed long ago in perfect faithfulness. Indeed, you have made the city a heap of rubble, the fortified town a ruin. The fortress of strangers is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore a strong people will honor you. The cities of ruthless nations will revere you. For you have been a refuge for the poor, a stronghold for the needy in distress, a refuge from the storm, a shade from the heat. For the breath of the ruthless is like rain against a wall, like heat in a dry land. You subdue the uproar of foreigners. As the shade of a cloud cools the heat, so the song of the ruthless is silenced. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will prepare a banquet for all the peoples, a feast of aged wine, of choice meat, of finely aged wine. On this mountain he will swallow up the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face and remove the disgrace of His people from the whole earth. For the Lord has spoken. And in that day it will be said, Surely this is our God. We have waited for Him, and He has saved us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us rejoice and be glad in His salvation. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain, but Moab will be trampled in his place as straw is trodden into the dung pile. He will spread out his hands within it as a swimmer spreads his arms to swim. His pride will be brought low despite the skill of his hands. The high-walled fortress will be brought down, cast to the ground into the dust. Isaiah 26 In that day this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation is established as its walls and ramparts. Open the gates so a righteous nation may enter, one that remains faithful. You will keep in perfect peace the steadfast of mind, because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, because God the Lord is the rock eternal. For He has humbled those who dwell on high. He lays the lofty city low. He brings it down to the ground. He casts it into the dust. Feet trample it down, the feet of the oppressed, the steps of the poor. The path of the righteous is level. You clear a straight path for the upright. Yes, we wait for you, O Lord. We walk in the path of your judgments. Your name and renown are the desire of our souls. My soul longs for you in the night. Indeed, my spirit seeks you at dawn. For when your judgments come upon the earth, the people of the world learn righteousness. Though grace is shown to the wicked man, he does not learn righteousness. In the land of righteousness he acts unjustly and fails to see the majesty of the Lord. O Lord, your hand is upraised, but they do not see it. They will see your zeal for your people and be put to shame. The fire set for your enemies will consume them. O Lord, you will establish peace for us. For all that we have accomplished, you have done for us. 
O Lord our God, other lords besides you have had dominion, but your name alone do we confess. The dead will not live, the departed spirits will not rise. Therefore you have punished and destroyed them, you have wiped out all memory of them. You have enlarged the nation, O Lord, you have enlarged the nation. You have gained glory for yourself. You have extended all the borders of the land. O Lord, they sought you in their distress. When you disciplined them, they poured out a quiet prayer. As a woman with child about to give birth writhes and cries out in pain, so were we in your presence, O Lord. We were with child, we writhed in pain, but we gave birth to wind. We have given no salvation to the earth, nor brought any life into the world. Your dead will live, their bodies will rise. Awake and sing, you who dwell in the dust. For your dew is like the dew of the morning, and the earth will bring forth her dead. Go, my people, enter your rooms and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourselves a little while until the wrath has passed. For behold, the Lord is coming out of his dwelling to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth will reveal her bloodshed and will no longer conceal her slain. Isaiah 27 In that day the Lord will take his sharp, great, and mighty sword and bring judgment on Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, Leviathan, the coiling serpent, and he will slay the dragon of the sea. In that day, sing about a fruitful vineyard. I, the Lord, am its keeper. I water it continually. I guard it day and night, so no one can disturb it. I am not angry. If only thorns and briars confronted me, I would march and trample them. I would burn them to the ground. Or let them lay claim to my protection. Let them make peace with me. Yes, let them make peace with me. In the days to come, Jacob will take root. Israel will bud and blossom and fill the whole world with fruit. Has the Lord struck Israel as he struck her oppressors? Was she killed like those who slayed her? By warfare and exile you contended with her, and removed her with a fierce wind, as on the day the east wind blows. Therefore Jacob's guilt will be atoned for, and the full fruit of the removal of his sin will be this. When he makes all the altar stones like crushed bits of chalk, no Asherah poles or incense altars will remain standing. For the fortified city lies deserted, a homestead abandoned, a wilderness forsaken. There the calves graze, and there they lie down. They strip its branches bare. When its limbs are dry, they are broken off. Women come and use them for kindling, for this is a people without understanding. Therefore their Maker has no compassion on them, and their Creator shows them no favor. In that day the Lord will thresh from the flowing Euphrates to the wadi of Egypt, and you, O Israelites, will be gathered one by one. And in that day a great ram's horn will sound, and those who were perishing in Assyria will come forth with those who were exiles in Egypt. And they will worship the Lord on the holy mountain in Jerusalem. Isaiah 28 Woe to the majestic crown of Ephraim's drunkards, to the fading flower of his glorious splendor, set on the summit above the fertile valley, the pride of those overcome by wine. Behold, the Lord has one who is strong and mighty, like a hailstorm or destructive tempest, like a driving rain or flooding downpour, he will smash that crown to the ground. The majestic crown of Ephraim's drunkards will be trampled underfoot. 
the fading flower of his beautiful splendor, set on the summit above the fertile valley, will be like a ripe fig before the summer harvest. Whoever sees it will take it in his hand and swallow it. On that day the Lord of hosts will be a crown of glory, a diadem of splendor to the remnant of his people, a spirit of justice to him who sits in judgment, and a strength to those who repel the onslaught at the gate. These also stagger from wine and stumble from strong drink. Priests and prophets reel from strong drink and are befuddled by wine. They stumble because of strong drink, muddled in their visions and stumbling in their judgments. For all their tables are covered with vomit. There is not a place without filth. Whom is he trying to teach? To whom is he explaining his message? To infants just weaned from milk? To babies removed from the breast? For they hear order on order, order on order, line on line, line on line, a little here, a little there. Indeed, with mocking lips and foreign tongues, he will speak to this people to whom he has said, This is the place of rest. Let the weary rest. This is the place of repose. But they would not listen. Then the word of the Lord to them will become order on order, order on order, line on line, line on line, a little here, a little there, so that they will go stumbling backward and will be injured, ensnared, and captured. Therefore, Hear the word of the Lord, O scoffers, who rule this people in Jerusalem. For you said, We have made a covenant with death. We have fashioned an agreement with Sheol. When the overwhelming scourge passes through, it will not touch us, because we have made lies our refuge and falsehood our hiding place. So this is what the Lord God says. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. The one who believes will never be shaken. I will make justice the measuring line, and righteousness the level. Hail will sweep away your refuge of lies, and water will flood your hiding place. Your covenant with death will be dissolved and your agreement with Sheol will not stand. When the overwhelming scourge passes through, you will be trampled by it. As often as it passes through, it will carry you away. It will sweep through morning after morning, by day and by night. The understanding of this message will bring sheer terror. Indeed, the bed is too short to stretch out on and the blanket too small to wrap around you. For the Lord will rise up as at Mount Parazim. He will rouse himself as in the valley of Gibeon, to do his work, his strange work, and to perform his task, his disturbing task. So now do not mock, or your shackles will become heavier. Indeed, I have heard from the Lord God of hosts a decree of destruction against the whole land. Listen and hear my voice. Pay attention and hear what I say. Does the plowman plow for planting every day? Does he continuously loosen and harrow the soil? When he has leveled its surface, does he not sow caraway and scatter cumin? He plants wheat in rows and barley in plots, and rye within its border. For his God instructs and teaches him properly. Surely caraway is not threshed with a sledge, and the wheel of a cart is not rolled over the cumin. But caraway is beaten out with a stick, and cumin with a rod. Grain for bread must be ground, but it is not endlessly threshed. Though the wheels of the cart roll over it, the horses do not crush it. This also comes from the Lord of hosts, who is wonderful in counsel and excellent in wisdom. Isaiah 29 Woe to you, O Ariel, 
the city of Ariel, where David camped. Year upon year let your festivals recur, and I will constrain Ariel, and there will be mourning and lamentation. She will be like an altar hearth before me. I will camp in a circle around you. I will besiege you with towers and set up siege works against you. You will be brought low. You will speak from the ground, and out of the dust your words will be muffled. Your voice will be like a spirit from the ground. Your speech will whisper out of the dust. But your many foes will be like fine dust, the multitude of the ruthless like blowing chaff. Then, suddenly, in an instant, you will be visited by the Lord of hosts with thunder and earthquake and loud noise, with windstorm and tempest and consuming flame of fire. All the many nations going out to battle against Ariel, even all who war against her, laying siege and attacking her, will be like a dream, like a vision in the night." as when a hungry man dreams he is eating, then awakens still hungry, as when a thirsty man dreams he is drinking, then awakens faint and parched. So will it be for all the many nations who go to battle against Mount Zion. Stop and be astonished. Blind yourselves and be sightless. Be drunk, but not with wine. Stagger, but not from strong drink. For the Lord has poured out on you a spirit of deep sleep. He has shut your eyes, O prophets. He has covered your heads, O seers. And the entire vision will be to you like the words sealed in a scroll. If it is handed to someone to read, he will say, I cannot, because it is sealed. Or if the scroll is handed to one unable to read, he will say, I cannot read. Therefore the Lord said, These people draw near to me with their mouths, and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is but rules taught by men. Therefore I will again confound these people with wonder upon wonder. The wisdom of the wise will vanish, and the intelligence of the intelligent will be hidden. Woe to those who dig deep to hide their plans from the Lord. In darkness they do their works and say, Who sees us and who will know? You have turned things upside down as if the potter were regarded as clay. Shall what is formed say to him who formed it, He did not make me? Can the pottery say of the potter, He has no understanding? In a very short time will not Lebanon become an orchard, and the orchard seem like a forest? On that day the deaf will hear the words of the scroll, and out of the deep darkness the eyes of the blind will see. The humble will increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men will rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. For the ruthless will vanish, the mockers will disappear, and all who look for evil will be cut down. Those who indict a man with a word, who ensnare the mediator at the gate, and who with false charges deprive the innocent of justice. Therefore the Lord who redeemed Abraham says of the house of Jacob, No longer will Jacob be ashamed, and no more will his face grow pale. For when he sees his children around him, the work of my hands, they will honor my name, they will sanctify the Holy One of Jacob, and they will stand in awe of the God of Israel. Then the wayward in spirit will come to understanding, and those who grumble will accept instruction. Isaiah 30 Woe to the rebellious children, declares the Lord. To those who carry out a plan that is not mine, who form an alliance, but against my will, heaping up sin upon sin. They set out to go down to Egypt without asking my advice, to seek shelter under Pharaoh's protection and take refuge in Egypt's shade. 
But Pharaoh's protection will become your shame, and the refuge of Egypt's shade your disgrace. For though their princes are at Zoan, and their envoys have arrived in Hanes, every one will be put to shame because of a people useless to them. They cannot be of help. They are good for nothing but shame and reproach. This is the burden against the beasts of the Negev. Through a land of hardship and distress, of lioness and lion, of viper and flying serpent, they carry their wealth on the backs of donkeys and their treasures on the humps of camels to a people of no profit to them. Egypt's help is futile and empty. Therefore I have called her Rahab who sits still. Go now, write it on a tablet in their presence and inscribe it on a scroll. It will be for the days to come, a witness forever and ever. These are rebellious people, deceitful children, children unwilling to obey the Lord's instruction. They say to the seers, Stop seeing visions, and to the prophets, Do not prophesy to us the truth. Speak to us pleasant words, prophesy illusions. Get out of the way, turn off the road, rid us of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore, this is what the Holy One of Israel says. Because you have rejected this message, trusting in oppression and relying on deceit, this iniquity of yours is like a breach about to fail, a bulge in a high wall whose collapse will come suddenly, in an instant. It will break in pieces like a potter's jar, shattered so that no fragment can be found. Not a shard will be found in the dust large enough to scoop the coals from a hearth or to skim the water from a cistern. For the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, has said, By repentance and rest you would be saved. Your strength would lie in quiet confidence. But you were not willing. No, you say, we will flee on horses. Therefore you will flee. We will ride swift horses but your pursuers will be faster. A thousand will flee at the threat of one. At the threat of five, you will all flee, until you are left alone like a pole on a mountaintop, like a banner on a hill. Therefore the Lord longs to be gracious to you. Therefore he rises to show you compassion. For the Lord is a just God. Blessed are all who wait for him. O people in Zion who dwell in Jerusalem, you will weep no more. He will surely be gracious when you cry for help. When he hears, he will answer you. The Lord will give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction. But your teacher will no longer hide himself. With your own eyes you will see him. And whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear this command behind you. This is the way. Walk in it. So you will desecrate your silver-plated idols and your gold-plated images. You will throw them away like menstrual cloths, saying to them, Be gone. Then he will send rain for the seed that you have sown in the ground, and the food that comes from your land will be rich and plentiful. On that day your cattle will graze in open pastures. The oxen and donkeys that work the ground will eat salted fodder, winnowed with shovel and pitchfork. And from every high mountain and every raised hill streams of water will flow in the day of great slaughter when the towers fall. The light of the moon will be as bright as the sun, and the light of the sun will be seven times brighter like the light of seven days, on the day that the Lord binds up the brokenness of His people and heals the wounds He has inflicted. Behold, the name of the Lord comes from afar with burning anger and dense smoke. His lips are full of fury and His tongue is like a consuming fire. His breath is like a rushing torrent that rises to the neck. He comes to sift the nations in a sieve of destruction. He bridles the jaws of the peoples to lead them astray. 
you will sing as on the night of a holy festival, and your heart will rejoice like one who walks to the music of a flute, going up to the mountain of the Lord, to the rock of Israel. And the Lord will cause His majestic voice to be heard, and His mighty arm to be revealed, striking in angry wrath with a flame of consuming fire, and with cloudburst, storm, and hailstones. For Assyria will be shattered at the voice of the Lord. He will strike them with his scepter. And with every stroke of the rod of punishment that the Lord brings down on them, the tambourines and lyres will sound as he battles with weapons brandished. For Topheth has long been prepared. It has been made ready for the king. Its funeral pyre is deep and wide, with plenty of fire and wood. The breath of the Lord, like a torrent of burning sulfur, sets it ablaze. Isaiah 31 Woe to those who go down to Egypt for help, who rely on horses, who trust in their abundance of chariots and in their multitude of horsemen. They do not look to the Holy One of Israel. They do not seek the Lord. Yet he too is wise and brings disaster. He does not call back his words. He will rise up against the house of the wicked and against the allies of evildoers. But the Egyptians are men, not God. Their horses are flesh, not spirit. When the Lord stretches out his hand, the helper will stumble and the one he helps will fall. Both will perish together. For this is what the Lord has said to me. Like a lion roaring, or a young lion over its prey, and though a band of shepherds is called out against it, it is not terrified by their shouting or subdued by their clamor. So the Lord of hosts will come down to do battle on Mount Zion and its heights. Like birds hovering overhead, so the Lord of hosts will protect Jerusalem. He will shield it and deliver it. He will pass over it and preserve it. Return to the one against whom you have so blatantly rebelled, O children of Israel. For on that day every one of you will reject the idols of silver and gold that your own hands have sinfully made. Then Assyria will fall but not by the sword of man. A sword will devour them, but not one made by mortals. They will flee before the sword, and their young men will be put to forced labor. Their rock will pass away for fear, and their princes will panic at the sight of the battle standard, declares the Lord, whose fire is in Zion, whose furnace is in Jerusalem. Isaiah 32 Behold, a king will reign in righteousness, and princes will rule with justice. Each will be like a shelter from the wind, a refuge from the storm, like streams of water in a dry land, like the shadow of a great rock in an arid land. Then the eyes of those who see will no longer be closed, and the ears of those who hear will listen. The mind of the rash will know and understand, and the stammering tongue will speak clearly and fluently. No longer will a fool be called noble, nor a scoundrel be respected. For a fool speaks foolishness, his mind plots iniquity. He practices ungodliness and speaks falsely about the Lord. He leaves the hungry empty and deprives the thirsty of drink. The weapons of the scoundrel are destructive. He hatches plots to destroy the poor with lies, even when the plea of the needy is just. But a noble man makes honorable plans. He stands up for worthy causes. Stand up, you complacent women. Listen to me. Give ear to my word, you overconfident daughters. In a little more than a year, you will tremble, O secure ones, for the grape harvest will fail, and the fruit harvest will not arrive. Shudder, you ladies of leisure, tremble, you daughters of complacency. 
Strip yourselves bare and put sackcloth around your waists. Beat your breasts for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vines, and for the land of my people, overgrown with thorns and briars, even for every house of merriment in this city of revelry. For the palace will be forsaken, the busy city abandoned. The hill and the watchtower will become caves forever, the delight of wild donkeys and a pasture for flocks, until the Spirit is poured out upon us from on high. Then the desert will be an orchard, and the orchard will seem like a forest. Then justice will inhabit the wilderness, and righteousness will dwell in the fertile field. The work of righteousness will be peace, the service of righteousness will be quiet confidence forever. Then my people will dwell in a peaceful place, in safe and secure places of rest. But hail will level the forest, and the city will sink to the depths. Blessed are those who sow beside abundant waters, who let the ox and donkey range freely. Isaiah 33 Woe to you, O destroyer, never destroyed! O traitor, never betrayed! When you have finished destroying, you will be destroyed. When you have finished betraying, you will be betrayed. O Lord, be gracious to us. We wait for you. Be our strength every morning and our salvation in time of trouble. The peoples flee the thunder of your voice. The nations scatter when you rise. Your spoil, O nations, is gathered as by locusts. Like a swarm of locusts, men sweep over it. The Lord is exalted, for He dwells on high. He has filled Zion with justice and righteousness. He will be the sure foundation for your times, a storehouse of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is Zion's treasure. Behold, their valiant ones cry aloud in the streets. The envoys of peace weep bitterly. The highways are deserted. Travel has ceased. The treaty has been broken. The witnesses are despised. And human life is disregarded. The land mourns and languishes. Lebanon is ashamed and decayed. Sharon is like a desert. Bashan and Carmel shake off their leaves. Now I will arise, says the Lord. Now I will lift myself up. Now I will be exalted. You conceive chaff. You give birth to stubble. Your breath is a fire that will consume you. The peoples will be burned to ashes like thorns cut down and set ablaze. You who are far off, hear what I have done. You who are near, acknowledge my might. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Trembling grips the ungodly. Who of us can dwell with a consuming fire? Who of us can dwell with everlasting flames? He who walks righteously and speaks with sincerity, who refuses gain from extortion, whose hand never takes a bribe, who stops his ears against murderous plots and shuts his eyes tightly against evil. He will dwell on the heights. The mountain fortress will be his refuge. His food will be provided and his water assured. Your eyes will see the king in his beauty and behold a land that stretches afar. Your mind will ponder the former terror. Where is he who tallies? Where is he who weighs? Where is he who counts the towers? You will no longer see the insolent, a people whose speech is unintelligible, who stammer in a language you cannot understand. Look upon Zion, the city of our appointed feasts. Your eyes will see Jerusalem, a peaceful pasture, a tent that does not wander. Its tent pegs will not be pulled up, nor will any of its cords be broken. But there the Majestic One, our Lord, 
will be for us a place of rivers and wide canals, where no galley with oars will row, and no majestic vessel will pass. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king. It is He who will save us. Your ropes are slack. They cannot secure the mast or spread the sail. Then an abundance of spoils will be divided, and even the lame will carry off plunder. And no resident of Zion will say, I am sick. The people who dwell there will be forgiven of iniquity. Isaiah 34 Come near, O nations, to listen. Pay attention, O peoples. Let the earth hear and all that fills it, the world and all that springs from it. The Lord is angry with all the nations and furious with all their armies. He will devote them to destruction. He will give them over to slaughter. Their slain will be left unburied and the stench of their corpses will rise. The mountains will flow with their blood. All the stars of heaven will be dissolved. The skies will be rolled up like a scroll, and all their stars will fall like withered leaves from the vine, like foliage from the fig tree. When my sword has drunk its fill in the heavens, then it will come down upon Edom upon the people I have devoted to destruction. The sword of the Lord is bathed in blood. It drips with fat, with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord has a sacrifice in Basra, a great slaughter in the land of Edom. And the wild oxen will fall with them, the young bulls with the strong ones. Their land will be drenched with blood, and their soil will be soaked with fat. For the Lord has a day of vengeance, a year of recompense for the cause of Zion. Edom's streams will be turned to tar, and her soil to sulfur. Her land will become a blazing pitch. It will not be quenched day or night. Its smoke will ascend forever. From generation to generation it will lie desolate. No one will ever again pass through it. The desert owl and screech owl will possess it, and the great owl and raven will dwell in it. The Lord will stretch out over Edom a measuring line of chaos and a plumb line of destruction. No nobles will be left to proclaim a king, and all her princes will come to nothing. Her towers will be overgrown with thorns, her fortresses with thistles and briars. She will become a haunt for jackals, an abode for ostriches. The desert creatures will meet with hyenas, and one wild goat will call to another. There the night creature will settle and find her place of repose. There the owl will make her nest. She will lay and hatch her eggs and gather her brood under her shadow. Even there the birds of prey will gather, each with its mate. Search and read the scroll of the Lord. Not one of these will go missing. Not one will lack her mate, because he has ordered it by his mouth, and he will gather them by his spirit. He has allotted their portion. His hand has distributed it by measure. They will possess it forever. They will dwell in it from generation to generation. Isaiah 35 The wilderness and the land will be glad. The desert will rejoice and blossom like a rose. It will bloom profusely and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon will be given to it the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of the Lord, the splendor of our God. Strengthen the limp hands and steady the feeble knees. Say to those with anxious hearts, Be strong, do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. With divine retribution, He will come to save you. 
Then the eyes of the blind will be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame will leap like a deer, and the mute tongue will shout for joy. For waters will gush forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The parched ground will become a pool, the thirsty land springs of water. In the haunt where jackals once lay, there will be grass and reeds and papyrus. And there will be a highway called the way of holiness. The unclean will not travel it, only those who walk in the way, and fools will not stray onto it. No lion will be there, and no vicious beast will go up on it. Such will not be found there, but the redeemed will walk upon it. So the redeemed of the Lord will return and enter Zion with singing, crowned with everlasting joy. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee. Isaiah 36 In the fourteenth year of Hezekiah's reign, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, attacked and captured all the fortified cities of Judah. And the king of Assyria sent the Rabshakeh with a great army from Lachish to king Hezekiah at Jerusalem. And he stopped by the aqueduct of the upper pool on the road to the launderer's field. Then Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, the palace administrator, Shebna the scribe, and Joah, son of Asaph, the recorder, went out to him. The Rabshakeh said to them, Tell Hezekiah that this is what the great king, the king of Assyria, says. What is the basis of this confidence of yours? You claim to have a strategy and strength for war, but these are empty words. In whom are you now trusting that you have rebelled against me? Look now, you are trusting in Egypt, that splintered reed of a staff that will pierce the hand of anyone who leans on it. Such is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all who trust in him. But if you say to me, We trust in the Lord our God, is he not the one whose high places and altars Hezekiah has removed, saying to Judah and Jerusalem, You must worship before this altar? Now therefore make a bargain with my master, the king of Assyria. I will give you two thousand horses, if you can put riders on them. For how can you repel a single officer among the least of my master's servants when you depend on Egypt for chariots and horsemen? So now, was it apart from the Lord that I have come up against this land to destroy it? The Lord himself said to me, Go up against this land and destroy it. Then Eliakim, Shebna, and Joah said to the Rabshakeh, Please speak to your servants in Aramaic since we understand it. Do not speak to us in Hebrew in the hearing of the people on the wall. But the Rabshakeh replied, Has my master sent me to speak these words only to you and your master, and not to the men sitting on the wall, who are destined with you to eat their own dung and drink their own urine? Then the Rabshakeh stood and called out loudly in Hebrew, Hear the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. This is what the king says. Do not let Hezekiah deceive you, for he cannot deliver you. Do not let Hezekiah persuade you to trust in the Lord when he says, The Lord will surely deliver us. This city will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Do not listen to Hezekiah, for this is what the king of Assyria says. Make peace with me, and come out to me. Then every one of you will eat from his own vine and his own fig tree, and drink water from his own cistern, until I come and take you away to a land like your own, a land of grain and new wine, a land of bread and vineyards. Do not let Hezekiah mislead you when he says, The Lord will deliver us. Has the God of any nation ever delivered his land from the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvaim? Have they delivered Samaria from my hand? Who among all the gods of these lands has delivered his land from my hand? 
How then can the Lord deliver Jerusalem from my hand? But the people remained silent and did not answer a word, for Hezekiah had commanded, Do not answer him. Then Hilkiah's son Eliakim, the palace administrator, Shebna the scribe, and Asaph's son Joah the recorder, came to Hezekiah with their clothes torn, and they relayed to him the words of the Ramshakeh. Isaiah 37 On hearing this report, King Hezekiah tore his clothes, put on sackcloth, and entered the house of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim, the palace administrator, Shebna the scribe, and the leading priests, all wearing sackcloth, to the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, to tell him, This is what Hezekiah says, Today is a day of distress, rebuke, and disgrace. For children have come to the point of birth, but there is no strength to deliver them. Perhaps the Lord your God will hear the words of the Rabshakeh, whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to defy the living God, and he will rebuke him for the words that the Lord your God has heard. Therefore lift up a prayer for the remnant that still survives. So the servants of King Hezekiah went to Isaiah, who replied, Tell your master that this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid of the words you have heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I will put a spirit in him, so that he will hear a rumor and return to his own land, where I will cause him to fall by the sword. When the Rabshakeh heard that the king of Assyria had left Lachish, he withdrew and found the king fighting against Libna. Now Sennacherib had been warned about Terheka, king of Cush, he has set out to fight against you. On hearing this, Sennacherib sent messengers to Hezekiah, saying, Give this message to Hezekiah, king of Judah. Do not let your God, in whom you trust, deceive you by saying that Jerusalem will not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Surely you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all the other countries, devoting them to destruction. Will you then be spared? Did the gods of the nations destroyed by my fathers rescue those nations? The gods of Gozan, Haran, and Rezeph, and of the people of Eden in Talasser? Where are the kings of Hamath, Arpad, Sepharvaim, Hena, and Iva? So Hezekiah received the letter from the messengers, read it, and went up to the house of the Lord, and spread it out before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed to the Lord, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, enthroned above the cherubim, you alone are God over all the kingdoms of the earth. You made the heavens and the earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Listen to all the words that Sennacherib has sent to defy the living God. Truly, O Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste all these countries and their lands. They have cast their gods into the fire and destroyed them, for they were not gods, but only wood and stone, the work of human hands. And now, O Lord our God, Save us from his hand, so that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone, O Lord, are God. Then Isaiah, son of Amos, sent a message to Hezekiah. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Because you have prayed to me concerning Sennacherib, king of Assyria, this is the word that the Lord has spoken against him. The virgin daughter of Zion despises you and mocks you. The daughter of Jerusalem shakes her head behind you. Whom have you taunted and blasphemed? Against whom have you raised your voice and lifted your eyes in pride? Against the Holy One of Israel. Through your servants you have taunted the Lord, and you have said, With my many chariots I have ascended to the heights of the mountains, to the remote peaks of Lebanon. I have cut down its tallest cedars, the finest of its cypresses. I have reached its farthest heights, 
the densest of its forests. I have dug wells and drunk foreign waters. With the soles of my feet I have dried up all the streams of Egypt. Have you not heard? Long ago I ordained it. In days of old I planned it. Now I have brought it to pass that you should crush fortified cities into piles of rubble. Therefore their inhabitants, devoid of power, are dismayed and ashamed. They are like plants in the field, tender green shoots, grass on the rooftops, scorched before it is grown. But I know your sitting down, your going out and coming in, and your raging against me. Because your rage and arrogance against me have reached my ears, I will put my hook in your nose and my bit in your mouth. I will send you back the way you came. And this will be a sign to you, O Hezekiah. This year you will eat what grows on its own, and in the second year what springs from the same. But in the third year you will sow and reap, you will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. And the surviving remnant of the house of Judah will again take root below and bear fruit above. For a remnant will go forth from Jerusalem and survivors from Mount Zion. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. So this is what the Lord says about the king of Assyria. He will not enter this city or shoot an arrow into it. He will not come before it with a shield or build up a siege ramp against it. He will go back the way he came, and he will not enter this city, declares the Lord. I will defend this city and save it for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. Then the angel of the Lord went out and struck down 185,000 men in the camp of the Assyrians. When the people got up the next morning, there were all the dead bodies. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, broke camp and withdrew. He returned to Nineveh and stayed there. One day, while he was worshipping in the temple of his god Nisroch, his sons Adramelech and Sherezer put him to the sword and escaped to the land of Ararat. And his son Esarhaddon reigned in his place. Isaiah 38 In those days Hezekiah became mortally ill. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, came to him and said, This is what the Lord says. Put your house in order, for you are about to die. You will not recover. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Please, O Lord, Remember how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion. I have done what was good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. And the word of the Lord came to Isaiah, saying, Go and tell Hezekiah that this is what the Lord, the God of your father David, says. I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Behold, I will add fifteen years to your life, and I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city. This will be a sign to you from the Lord that he will do what he has promised. I will make the sun's shadow that falls on the stairway of Ahaz go back ten steps. So the sunlight went back the ten steps it had descended. This is a writing by Hezekiah, king of Judah, after his illness and recovery. I said, In the prime of my life I must go through the gates of Sheol and be deprived of the remainder of my years. I said, I will never again see the Lord, even the Lord, in the land of the living. I will no longer look on mankind with those who dwell in this world. My dwelling has been picked up and removed from me like a shepherd's tent. I have rolled up my life like a weaver. He cuts me off from the loom. From day until night you make an end of me. I composed myself until the morning. 
Like a lion, he breaks all my bones. From day until night, you make an end of me. I chirp like a swallow or crane. I moan like a dove. My eyes grow weak as I look upward. O Lord, I am oppressed. Be my security. What can I say? He has spoken to me, and he himself has done this. I will walk slowly all my years because of the anguish of my soul. O Lord, by such things men live, and in all of them my spirit finds life. You have restored me to health and have let me live. Surely for my own welfare I had such great anguish. But your love has delivered me from the pit of oblivion, for you have cast all my sins behind your back. For Sheol cannot thank you, death cannot praise you. Those who descend to the pit cannot hope for your faithfulness. The living, only the living, can thank you, as I do today. Fathers will tell their children about your faithfulness. The Lord will save me. We will play songs on stringed instruments all the days of our lives in the house of the Lord. Now Isaiah had said, Prepare a lump of pressed figs and apply it to the boil, and he will recover. And Hezekiah had asked, What will be the sign that I will go up to the house of the Lord? Isaiah 39 At that time Merodach-Baladan, son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a gift to Hezekiah, for he had heard about Hezekiah's illness and recovery. And Hezekiah welcomed the envoys gladly, and showed them what was in his treasure house, the silver, the gold, the spices, and the precious oil, as well as his entire armory all that was found in his storehouses. There was nothing in his palace or in all his dominion that Hezekiah did not show them. Then the prophet Isaiah went to King Hezekiah and asked, Where did those men come from, and what did they say to you? They came to me from a distant land, Hezekiah replied, from Babylon. What have they seen in your palace? Isaiah asked. They have seen everything in my palace, answered Hezekiah. There is nothing among my treasures that I did not show them. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. The time will surely come when everything in your palace and all that your fathers have stored up until this day will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord and some of your descendants, your own flesh and blood, will be taken away to be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. But Hezekiah said to Isaiah, The word of the Lord that you have spoken is good. For he thought, At least there will be peace and security in my lifetime. Isaiah 40 Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem, and proclaim to her that her forced labor has been completed, her iniquity has been pardoned, for she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice of one calling, Prepare the way for the Lord in the wilderness. Make a straight highway for our God in the desert. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground will become smooth, and the rugged land a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all humanity together will see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! And I asked, What should I cry out? All flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall when the breath of the Lord blows on them. Indeed, the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. 
Go up on a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Raise your voice loudly, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and His arm establishes His rule. His reward is with Him, and His recompense accompanies Him. He tends His flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in His arms and carries them close to His heart. He gently leads the nursing ewes. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of His hand, or marked off the heavens with the span of His hand? Who has held the dust of the earth in a basket, or weighed the mountains on a scale, and the hills with a balance? Who has directed the Spirit of the Lord, or informed Him as His counselor? Whom did He consult to enlighten Him, and who taught Him the paths of justice? Who imparted knowledge to Him, and showed Him the way of understanding? Surely the nations are like a drop in a bucket. They are considered a speck of dust on the scales. He lifts up the islands like fine dust. Lebanon is not sufficient for fuel, nor its animals enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before Him. He regards them as nothingness and emptiness. To whom will you liken God? To what image will you compare Him? To an idol that a craftsman casts, and a metal worker overlays with gold, and fits with silver chains? To one bereft of an offering, who chooses wood that will not rot, who seeks a skilled craftsman to set up an idol that will not topple? Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been declared to you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the foundation of the earth? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth. Its dwellers are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. He brings the princes to nothing, and makes the rulers of the earth meaningless. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner have their stems taken root in the ground, than He blows on them, and they wither, and a whirlwind sweeps them away like stubble. To whom will you liken me? Or who is my equal, asks the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high. Who created all these? He leads forth the starry host by number. He calls each one by name. Because of His great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and why do you assert, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my claim is ignored by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the Creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. His understanding is beyond searching out. He gives power to the faint and increases the strength of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Isaiah 41 Be silent before me, O islands, and let the peoples renew their strength. Let them come forward and testify. Let us together draw near for judgment. Who has aroused one from the east and called him to his feet in righteousness? He hands nations over to him and subdues kings before him. He turns them to dust with his sword, to wind-blown chaff with his bow. He pursues them, going on safely, hardly touching the path with his feet. Who has performed this and carried it out? calling forth the generations from the beginning. I, the Lord, the first and the last, I am He. The islands see and fear. The ends of the earth tremble. 
they approach and come forward. Each one helps the other and says to his brother, Be strong. The craftsman encourages the goldsmith, and he who wields the hammer cheers him who strikes the anvil, saying of the welding, It is good. He nails it down so it will not be toppled. But you, O Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, descendant of Abraham, my friend, I brought you from the ends of the earth and called you from its farthest corners. I said, You are my servant. I have chosen and not rejected you. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will surely help you. I will uphold you with my right hand of righteousness. Behold, all who rage against you will be ashamed and disgraced. Those who contend with you will be reduced to nothing and will perish. You will seek them, but will not find them. Those who wage war against you will come to nothing. For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and tells you, Do not fear, I will help you. Do not fear, O worm of Jacob, O few men of Israel. I will help you, declares the Lord. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make you into a threshing sledge, new and sharp, with many teeth. You will thresh the mountains and crush them, and reduce the hills to chaff. You will winnow them, and a wind will carry them away. A gale will scatter them. But you will rejoice in the Lord. You will glory in the Holy One of Israel. The poor and needy seek water, but there is none. Their tongues are parched with thirst. I, the Lord, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers on the barren heights and fountains in the middle of the valleys. I will turn the desert into a pool of water and the dry land into flowing springs. I will plant cedars in the wilderness, acacias, myrtles, and olive trees. I will set cypresses in the desert, elms and boxwood together, so that all may see and know, may consider and understand that the hand of the Lord has done this, and the Holy One of Israel has created it. Present your case, says the Lord. Submit your arguments, says the King of Jacob. Let them come and tell us what will happen. Tell the former things, so that we may reflect on them and know the outcome, or announce to us what is coming. Tell us the things that are to come, so that we may know that you are gods. Yes, do something good or evil, that we may look on together in dismay. Behold, you are nothing, and your work is of no value. Anyone who chooses you is detestable. I have raised up one from the north, and he has come, one from the east who calls on my name. He will march over rulers as if they were mortar, like a potter who treads the clay. Who has declared this from the beginning, so that we may know, and from times past, so that we may say, He was right? No one announced it, no one foretold it, no one heard your words. I was the first to tell Zion, Look, here they are, and I gave to Jerusalem a herald of good news. When I look, there is no one, there is no counselor among them. When I ask them, they have nothing to say. See, they are all a delusion. Their works amount to nothing. Their images are as empty as the wind. Isaiah 42 Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one, in whom my soul delights. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not cry out or raise his voice, nor make his voice heard in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not extinguish. 
He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow weak or discouraged before he has established justice on the earth. In his law the islands will put their hope. This is what God the Lord says, He who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and its offspring, who gives breath to the people on it and life to those who walk in it. I, the Lord, have called you for a righteous purpose, and I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and appoint you to be a covenant for the people and a light to the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring prisoners out of the dungeon and those sitting in darkness out from the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. Behold, the former things have happened, and now I declare new things. Before they spring forth, I proclaim them to you. Sing to the Lord a new song, His praise from the ends of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that is in it, you islands and all who dwell in them, let the desert and its cities raise their voices. Let the villages of Kedar cry aloud. Let the people of Selah sing for joy. Let them cry out from the mountain tops. Let them give glory to the Lord and declare His praise in the islands. The Lord goes forth like a mighty one. He stirs up His zeal like a warrior. He shouts, yes, he roars in triumph over his enemies. I have kept silent from ages past. I have remained quiet and restrained. But now I will groan like a woman in labor. I will at once gasp and pant. I will lay waste the mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn the rivers into dry land and drain the marshes. I will lead the blind by a way they did not know. I will guide them on unfamiliar paths. I will turn darkness into light before them and rough places into level ground. These things I will do for them, and I will not forsake them. But those who trust in idols and say to molten images, You are our gods, will be turned back in utter shame. Listen, you deaf ones, look, you blind ones, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf like the messenger I am sending? Who is blind like my covenant partner, or blind like the servant of the Lord? Though seeing many things, you do not keep watch. Though your ears are open, you do not hear. The Lord was pleased for the sake of His righteousness to magnify His law and make it glorious. But this is a people plundered and looted, all trapped in caves or imprisoned in dungeons. They have become plunder with no one to rescue them, and loot with no one to say, Send them back. Who among you will pay attention to this? Who will listen and obey hereafter? Who gave Jacob up for spoil? and Israel to the plunderers. Was it not the Lord against whom we have sinned? They were unwilling to walk in His ways, and they would not obey His law. So He poured out on them His furious anger and the fierceness of battle. It enveloped them in flames, but they did not understand. It consumed them, but they did not take it to heart. Isaiah 43 now this is what the Lord says, He who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel. Do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you go through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be scorched. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your place. 
because you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you. I will give men in exchange for you, and nations in place of your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, Give them up, and to the south, Do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone called by my name and created for my glory, whom I have indeed formed and made. Bring out a people who have eyes but are blind, and who have ears but are deaf. All the nations gather together, and the peoples assemble. Who among them can declare this, and proclaim to us the former things? Let them present their witnesses to vindicate them, so that others may hear and say, It is true. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may consider and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, and after me none will come. I, yes, I am the Lord, and there is no Savior but me. I alone decreed and saved and proclaimed, I and not some foreign God among you. So you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. Even from eternity I am He, and none can deliver out of my hand. When I act, who can reverse it? Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I will send to Babylon and bring them all as fugitives, even the Chaldeans, in the ships in which they rejoice. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel and your King. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea and a path through the surging waters, who brings out the chariots and horses, the armies and warriors together, to lie down, never to rise again, to be extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Do not call to mind the former things. Pay no attention to the things of old. Behold, I am about to do something new. Even now it is coming. Do you not see it? Indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The beasts of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I provide water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people. The people I formed for myself will declare my praise. But you have not called on me, O Jacob, because you have grown weary of me, O Israel. You have not brought me sheep for burnt offerings, nor honored me with your sacrifices. I have not burdened you with offerings, nor wearied you with frankincense. You have not bought me sweet cane with your silver, nor satisfied me with the fat of your sacrifices. But you have burdened me with your sins, you have wearied me with your iniquities. I, yes, I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and remembers your sins no more. Remind me, let us argue the matter together. State your case so that you may be vindicated. Your first father sinned, and your spokesman rebelled against me. So I will disgrace the princes of your sanctuary, and I will devote Jacob to destruction, and Israel to reproach. Isaiah 44 But now listen, O Jacob, my servant, Israel, whom I have chosen. This is the word of the Lord, your Maker, who formed you from the womb and who will help you. Do not be afraid, O Jacob, my servant, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water on the thirsty land and currents on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your descendants, and my blessing on your offspring. They will sprout among the grass like willows by flowing streams. One will say, I belong to the Lord. Another will call himself by the name of Jacob. And still another will write on his hand, The Lord's, and will take the name of Israel. Thus says the Lord, the King and Redeemer of Israel, 
the Lord of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last, and there is no God but me. Who then is like me? Let him say so. Let him declare his case before me, since I established an ancient people. Let him foretell the things to come and what is to take place. Do not tremble or fear. Have I not told you and declared it long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any God but me? There is no other rock. I know not one. All makers of idols are nothing, and the things they treasure are worthless. Their witnesses fail to see or comprehend, so they are put to shame. Who fashions a god or casts an idol which profits him nothing? Behold, all his companions will be put to shame, for the craftsmen themselves are only human. Let them all assemble and take their stand. They will all be brought to terror and shame. The blacksmith takes a tool and labors over the coals. He fashions an idol with hammers and forges it with his strong arms. Yet he grows hungry and loses his strength. He fails to drink water and grows faint. The woodworker extends a measuring line. He marks it out with a stylus. He shapes it with chisels and outlines it with a compass. He fashions it in the likeness of man, like man in all his glory, that it may dwell in a shrine. He cuts down cedars or retrieves a cypress or oak. He lets it grow strong among the trees of the forest. He plants a laurel, and the rain makes it grow. It serves as fuel for man. He takes some of it to warm himself, and he kindles a fire and bakes his bread. He even fashions it into a god and worships it. He makes an idol and bows down to it. He burns half of it in the fire, and he roasts meat on that half. He eats the roast and is satisfied. Indeed, he warms himself and says, Ah, I am warm, I see the fire. From the rest he makes a god, his graven image. He bows down to it and worships. He prays to it and says, Save me, for you are my God. They do not comprehend or discern, for he has shut their eyes so they cannot see, and closed their minds so they cannot understand. And no one considers in his heart, no one has the knowledge or insight to say, I burned half of it in the fire, and I baked bread on its coals. I roasted meat, and I ate. Shall I make something detestable with the rest of it? Shall I bow down to a block of wood? He feeds on ashes. His deluded heart has led him astray, and he cannot deliver himself or say, Is not this thing in my right hand a lie? Remember these things, O Jacob, for you are my servant, O Israel. I have made you, and you are my servant. O Israel, I will never forget you. I have blotted out your transgressions like a cloud, and your sins like a mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Sing for joy, O heavens, for the Lord has done this. Shout aloud, O depths of the earth. Break forth in song, O mountains, you forests and all your trees. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and revealed his glory in Israel. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, who formed you from the womb. I am the Lord who has made all things, who alone stretched out the heavens, who by myself spread out the earth, who foils the signs of false prophets and makes fools of diviners, who confounds the wise and turns their knowledge into nonsense, who confirms the message of his servant and fulfills the counsel of his messengers, who says of Jerusalem, she will be inhabited, and of the cities of Judah, they will be rebuilt, and I will restore their ruins." who says to the depths of the sea, Be dry, and I will dry up your currents, who says of Cyrus, My shepherd will fulfill all that I desire, who says of Jerusalem, She will be rebuilt, and of the temple, let its foundation be laid. 
Isaiah 45 This is what the Lord says to Cyrus his anointed, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him, to disarm kings, to open the doors before him so that the gates will not be shut. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break down the gates of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by name. For the sake of Jacob my servant and Israel my chosen one, I call you by name. I have given you a title of honor, though you have not known me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God but me. I will equip you for battle, though you have not known me, so that all may know, from where the sun rises to where it sets, that there is none but me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form the light and create the darkness. I bring prosperity and create calamity. I, the Lord, do all these things. Drip down, O heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open up, that salvation may sprout, and righteousness spring up with it. I, the Lord, have created it. Woe to him who quarrels with his Maker, one clay pot among many. Does the clay ask the potter, What are you making? Does your work say, He has no hands? Woe to him who says to his father, What have you begotten? Or to his mother, What have you brought forth? Thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and its Maker, How dare you question me about my sons, or instruct me in the work of my hands? It is I who made the earth and created man upon it. It was my hands that stretched out the heavens, and I ordained all their host. I will raise up Cyrus in righteousness, and I will make all his ways straight. He will rebuild my city and set my exiles free, but not for payment or reward, says the Lord of hosts. This is what the Lord says, The products of Egypt and the merchandise of Cush, along with the Sabaeans, men of stature, will come over to you and will be yours. They will trudge behind you, they will come over in chains and bow down to you. They will confess to you, God is indeed with you, and there is no other. There is no other God. Truly you are a God who hides himself, O God of Israel, the Savior. They will all be put to shame and humiliated. The makers of idols will depart together in disgrace." But Israel will be saved by the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You will not be put to shame or humiliated to ages everlasting. For thus says the Lord, who created the heavens, He is God. He formed the earth and fashioned it. He established it. He did not create it to be empty, but formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I have not spoken in secret from a place in a land of darkness. I did not say to the descendants of Jacob, Seek me in a wasteland. I, the Lord, speak the truth. I say what is right. Come, gather together and draw near, you fugitives from the nations. Ignorant are those who carry idols of wood and pray to a God that cannot save. Speak up and present your case. Yes, let them take counsel together. Who foretold this long ago? Who announced it from ancient times? Was it not I, the Lord? There is no other God but me, a righteous God and Savior. There is none but me. Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is no other. By myself I have sworn... Truth has gone out from my mouth, a word that will not be revoked. Every knee will bow before me, every tongue will swear allegiance. Surely they will say of me, In the Lord alone are righteousness and strength. 
All who rage against him will come to him and be put to shame. In the Lord all descendants of Israel will be justified and will exult. Isaiah 46 Bel crouches, Nebo cowers. Their idols weigh down beasts and cattle. The images you carry are burdensome, a load to the weary animal. The gods cower, they crouch together, unable to relieve the burden. But they themselves go into captivity. Listen to me, O house of Jacob, all the remnant of the house of Israel, who have been sustained from the womb, carried along since birth. Even to your old age I will be the same, and I will bear you up when you turn gray. I have made you, and I will carry you. I will sustain you and deliver you. To whom will you liken me, or count me equal? To whom will you compare me, that we should be alike? They pour out their bags of gold and weigh out silver on scales. They hire a goldsmith to fashion it into a god, so they can bow down and worship. They lift it to their shoulder and carry it along. They set it in its place, and there it stands, not budging from that spot. They cry out to it, but it does not answer. It saves no one from his troubles. Remember this and be brave. Take it to heart, you transgressors. Remember what happened long ago, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. I declare the end from the beginning and ancient times from what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand, and all my good pleasure I will accomplish. I summon a bird of prey from the east, a man for my purpose from a far-off land. Truly I have spoken, and truly I will bring it to pass. I have planned it, and I will surely do it. Listen to me, you stubborn people far removed from righteousness. I am bringing my righteousness near. It is not far away, and my salvation will not be delayed. I will grant salvation to Zion and adorn Israel with my splendor. Isaiah 47 Go down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground without a throne, O daughter of Chaldea. For you will no longer be called tender or delicate. Take millstones and grind flour, remove your veil, strip off your skirt, bare your thigh, and wade through the streams. Your nakedness will be uncovered, and your shame will be exposed. I will take vengeance, I will spare no one. Our Redeemer the Lord of hosts is His name, is the Holy One of Israel. Sit in silence and go into darkness, O daughter of Chaldea, for you will no longer be called the Queen of Kingdoms. I was angry with my people, I profaned my heritage, and I placed them under your control. You showed them no mercy, even on the elderly you laid a most heavy yoke. You said, I will be queen forever. You did not take these things to heart or consider their outcome. So now hear this, O lover of luxury, who sits securely, who says to herself, I am, and there is none besides me. I will never be a widow or know the loss of children. These two things will overtake you in a moment, in a single day. Loss of children and widowhood. They will come upon you in full measure, in spite of your many sorceries and the potency of your spells. You were secure in your wickedness. You said, No one sees me. Your wisdom and knowledge led you astray. You told yourself, I am, and there is none besides me. But disaster will come upon you. You will not know how to charm it away. A calamity will befall you that you will be unable to ward off. Devastation will happen to you suddenly and unexpectedly. So take your stand with your spells and with your many sorceries, 
with which you have wearied yourself from your youth. Perhaps you will succeed. Perhaps you will inspire terror. You are wearied by your many counselors. Let them come forward now and save you. Your astrologers who observe the stars, who monthly predict your fate. Surely they are like stubble. The fire will burn them up. They cannot deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There will be no coals to warm them or fire to sit beside. This is what they are to you, those with whom you have labored and traded from youth. Each one strays in his own direction. Not one of them can save you. Isaiah 48 Listen to this, O house of Jacob, you who are called by the name of Israel, who have descended from the line of Judah, who swear by the name of the Lord, who invoke the God of Israel, but not in truth or righteousness, who indeed call yourselves after the holy city and lean on the God of Israel. The Lord of hosts is his name. I foretold the former things long ago. They came out of my mouth, and I proclaimed them. Suddenly I acted, and they came to pass. For I knew that you are stubborn. Your neck is iron, and your forehead is bronze. Therefore I declared it to you long ago. I announced it before it came to pass, so that you could not claim, My idol has done this, my carved image and molten god has ordained it. You have heard these things. Look at them all. Will you not acknowledge them? From now on I will tell you of new things, hidden things unknown to you. They are created now and not long ago. You have not heard of them before today. So you cannot claim, I already knew them. You have never heard. You have never understood. For a long time your ears have not been open. For I knew how deceitful you are. You have been called a rebel from birth. For the sake of my name I will delay my wrath. For the sake of my praise I will restrain it, so that you will not be cut off. See, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. For my own sake, my very own sake, I will act. For how can I let myself be defamed? I will not yield my glory to another. Listen to me, O Jacob, and Israel, whom I have called. I am he. I am the first, and I am the last. Surely my own hand founded the earth, and my right hand spread out the heavens. When I summon them, they stand up together. Come together, all of you, and listen. Which of the idols has foretold these things? The Lord's chosen ally will carry out his desire against Babylon, and his arm will be against the Chaldeans. I, even I, have spoken. Yes, I have called him. I have brought him, and he will succeed in his mission. Come near to me, and listen to this. From the beginning I have not spoken in secret. From the time it happened, I was there. And now the Lord God has sent me, accompanied by His Spirit. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God, who teaches you for your benefit, who directs you in the way you should go. If only you had paid attention to my commandments, your peace would have been like a river, and your righteousness like waves of the sea. Your descendants would have been as countless as the sand, and your offspring as numerous as its grains. Their name would never be cut off or eliminated from my presence. Leave Babylon, flee from the Chaldeans. Declare it with a shout of joy, proclaim it. Let it go out to the ends of the earth, saying, the Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob. They did not thirst when he led them through the deserts. He made water flow for them from the rock. He split the rock, and water gushed out. 
There is no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. Isaiah 49 Listen to me, O islands. Pay attention, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from the womb. From the body of my mother he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. He hid me in the shadow of his hand. He made me like a polished arrow. He hid me in his quiver. He said to me, You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will display my glory. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength in futility and vanity. Yet my vindication is with the Lord, and my reward is with my God. And now, says the Lord, who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord, and my God is my strength. He says, It is not enough for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the protected ones of Israel. I will also make you a light for the nations, to bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer and Holy One of Israel, to him who was despised and abhorred by the nation, to the servant of rulers. Kings will see you and rise, and princes will bow down because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. This is what the Lord says, In the time of favor I will answer you, and in the day of salvation I will help you. I will keep you and appoint you to be a covenant for the people, to restore the land, to apportion its desolate inheritances to say to the prisoners, Come out, and to those in darkness, Show yourselves. They will feed along the pathways, and find pasture on every barren hill. They will not hunger or thirst, nor will scorching heat or sun beat down on them. For he who has compassion on them will guide them and lead them beside springs of water. I will turn all my mountains into roads, and my highways will be raised up. Behold, they will come from far away, from the north and from the west, and from the land of Aswan. Shout for joy, O heavens! Rejoice, O earth! Break forth in song, O mountains! For the Lord has comforted His people, and He will have compassion on His afflicted ones. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child or lack compassion for the son of her womb? Even if she could forget, I will not forget you. Behold, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are ever before me. Your builders hasten back. Your destroyers and wreckers depart from you. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. As surely as I live, declares the Lord, you will wear them all as jewelry and put them on like a bride. For your ruined and desolate places and your ravaged land will now indeed be too small for your people, and those who devoured you will be far away. Yet the children of your bereavement will say in your hearing, This place is too small for us. Make room for us to live here. Then you will say in your heart, Who has begotten these for me? I was bereaved and barren. I was exiled and rejected. So who has reared them? Look, I was left all alone. So where did they come from? This is what the Lord God says. Behold, I will lift up my hand to the nations and raise my banner to the peoples. They will bring your sons in their arms and carry your daughters on their shoulders. Kings will be your foster fathers and their queens your nursing mothers. They will bow to you face down and lick the dust at your feet. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Those who hope in me will never be put to shame. 
Can the plunder be snatched from the mighty, or the captives of a tyrant be delivered? Indeed, this is what the Lord says. Even the captives of the mighty will be taken away, and the plunder of the tyrant will be retrieved. I will contend with those who contend with you, and I will save your children. I will make your oppressors eat their own flesh. They will be drunk on their own blood as with wine. Then all mankind will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Isaiah 50 This is what the Lord says, Where is your mother's certificate of divorce with which I sent her away? Or to which of my creditors did I sell you? Look, you were sold for your iniquities, and for your transgressions your mother was sent away. Why was no one there when I arrived? Why did no one answer when I called? Is my hand too short to redeem you? Or do I lack the strength to deliver you? Behold, my rebuke dries up the sea. I turn the rivers into a desert. The fish rot for lack of water and die of thirst. I clothe the heavens in black and make sackcloth their covering. The Lord God has given me the tongue of discipleship to sustain the weary with a word. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to listen as a disciple. The Lord God has opened my ears, and I have not been rebellious, nor have I turned back. I offered my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who tore out my beard. I did not hide my face from scorn and spittle. Because the Lord God helps me, I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I will not be put to shame. The one who vindicates me is near. Who will dare to contend with me? Let us confront each other. Who has a case against me? Let him approach me. Surely the Lord God helps me. Who is there to condemn me? See, they will all wear out like a garment. The moths will devour them. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? Who among you walks in darkness and has no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord. Let him lean on his God. Behold, all you who kindle a fire, who array yourselves with firebrands, Walk in the light of your fire and of the firebrands you have lit. This is what you will receive from my hand. You will lie down in a place of torment. Isaiah 51 Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness, you who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were cut and to the quarry from which you were hewn. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who gave you birth. When I called him, he was but one. Then I blessed him and multiplied him. For the Lord will comfort Zion, and will look with compassion on all her ruins. He will make her wilderness like Eden, and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and melodious song. Pay attention to me, my people, and listen to me, my nation. For a law will go out from me, and my justice will become a light to the nations. I will bring it about quickly. My righteousness draws near, my salvation is on the way, and my arms will bring justice to the nations. The islands will look for me and wait in hope for my arm. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth below. For the heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and its people will die like gnats. But my salvation will last forever, and my righteousness will never fail. Listen to me, 
you who know what is right, you people with my law in your hearts. Do not fear the scorn of men, do not be broken by their insults. For the moth will devour them like a garment, and the worm will eat them like wool. But my righteousness will last forever, my salvation through all generations. Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Wake up as in days past, as in generations of old. Was it not you who cut Rahab to pieces, who pierced through the dragon? Was it not you who dried up the sea, the waters of the great deep, who made a road in the depths of the sea for the redeemed to cross over? So the redeemed of the Lord will return and enter Zion with singing, crowned with everlasting joy. Gladness and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee. I, even I, am he who comforts you. Why should you be afraid of mortal man, of a son of man who withers like grass? But you have forgotten the Lord your Maker, who stretched out the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth. You live in terror all day long because of the fury of the oppressor who is bent on destruction. But where is the fury of the oppressor? The captive will soon be freed. He will not die in the dungeon, and his bread will not be lacking. For I am the Lord your God, who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. I have put my words in your mouth, and covered you with the shadow of my hand, to establish the heavens, to found the earth, and to say to Zion, You are my people. Awake! Awake! Rise up, O Jerusalem, you who have drunk from the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury, you who have drained the goblet to the dregs, the cup that makes men stagger. Among all the sons she bore, there is no one to guide her. Among all the sons she brought up, there is no one to take her hand. These pairs have befallen you, devastation and destruction famine and sword. Who will grieve for you? Who can comfort you? Your sons have fainted. They lie at the head of every street like an antelope in a net. They are full of the wrath of the Lord, the rebuke of your God. Therefore now hear this, you afflicted one, drunken but not with wine. Thus says your Lord, the Lord, even your God, who defends his people. See, I have removed from your hand the cup of staggering. From that goblet, the cup of my fury, you will never drink again. I will place it in the hands of your tormentors, who told you, Lie down so we can walk over you, so that you made your back like the ground, like a street to be traversed. Isaiah 52 Awake, awake! Clothe yourself with strength, O Zion. Put on your garments of splendor, O Jerusalem, holy city. For the uncircumcised and unclean will no longer enter you. Shake off your dust. Rise up and sit on your throne, O Jerusalem. Remove the chains from your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For this is what the Lord says. You were sold for nothing, and without money you will be redeemed. For this is what the Lord God says. At first my people went down to Egypt to live. Then Assyria oppressed them without cause. And now what have I here, declares the Lord? For my people have been taken without cause. Those who rule them taunt declares the Lord. And my name is blasphemed continually all day long. Therefore my people will know my name. Therefore they will know on that day that I am he who speaks. Here I am. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, 
who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, Your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voices. Together they shout for joy. For every eye will see when the Lord returns to Zion. Break forth in joy. Sing together, O ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted His people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared His holy arm in the sight of all the nations. All the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. Depart, depart, go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Come out from it. Purify yourselves, you who carry the vessels of the Lord. For you will not leave in a hurry, nor flee in haste. For the Lord goes before you, and the God of Israel is your rear guard. Behold, my servant will prosper. He will be raised and lifted up, and highly exalted. Just as many were appalled at him, his appearance was disfigured beyond that of any man, and his form was marred beyond human likeness. So he will sprinkle many nations. Kings will shut their mouths because of him, for they will see what they have not been told, and they will understand what they have not heard. Isaiah 53 Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no stately form or majesty to attract us, no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took on our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, struck down and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray, each one has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and who can recount his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living, he was stricken for the transgression of my people. He was assigned a grave with the wicked, and with a rich man in his death, although he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him, and to cause him to suffer. And when his soul is made a guilt offering, he will see his offspring, he will prolong his days, and the good pleasure of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After the anguish of his soul, he will see the light of life, and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he has poured out his life unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Isaiah 54 Shout for joy, O barren woman, who bears no children. Break forth in song and cry aloud, you who have never travailed. Because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. 
Enlarge the site of your tent. Stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not hold back. Lengthen your ropes and drive your stakes in deep. For you will spread out to the right and left. Your descendants will dispossess the nations and inhabit the desolate cities. Do not be afraid, for you will not be put to shame. Do not be intimidated, for you will not be humiliated. For you will forget the shame of your youth, and will remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. For your husband is your Maker, the Lord of hosts is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. He is called the God of all the earth. For the Lord has called you back, like a wife deserted and wounded in spirit, like the rejected wife of one's youth, says your God. For a brief moment I forsook you, but with great compassion I will bring you back. In a surge of anger I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. For to me this is like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah would never again cover the earth. So I have sworn that I will not be angry with you or rebuke you. Though the mountains may be removed, and the hills may be shaken, my loving devotion will not depart from you, and my covenant of peace will not be broken, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. O afflicted city, lashed by storms, without solace, surely I will set your stones in antimony, and lay your foundations with sapphires. I will make your pinnacles of rubies, your gates of sparkling jewels, and all your walls of precious stones. Then all your sons will be taught by the Lord, and great will be their prosperity. In righteousness you will be established, far from oppression, for you will have no fear. Terror will be far removed, for it will not come near you. If anyone attacks you, it is not from me. Whoever assails you will fall before you. Behold, I have created the craftsman who fans the coals into flame and forges a weapon fit for its task. And I have created the destroyer to wreak havoc. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their vindication is from me, declares the Lord. Isaiah 55 Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you without money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on that which is not bread, and your labor on that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and your soul will delight in the richest of foods. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that your soul may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my loving devotion promised to David. Behold, I have made him a witness to the nations, a leader and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon a nation you do not know, and nations who do not know you will run to you. For the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, has bestowed glory on you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked man forsake his own way, and the unrighteous man his own thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have compassion, and to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. 
For just as rain and snow fall from heaven and do not return without watering the earth, making it bud and sprout, and providing seed to sow and food to eat, so my word that proceeds from my mouth will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I please, and it will prosper where I send it. You will indeed go out with joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush, a cypress will grow, and instead of the briar, a myrtle will spring up. They will make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign never to be destroyed. Isaiah 56 This is what the Lord says, Maintain justice and do what is right. For my salvation is coming soon, and my righteousness will be revealed. Blessed is the man who does this, and the son of man who holds it fast, who keeps the Sabbath without profaning it, and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Let no foreigner who has joined himself to the Lord say, The Lord will utterly exclude me from his people. And let the eunuch not say, I am but a dry tree. For this is what the Lord says, To the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, who choose what pleases me, and hold fast to my covenant, I will give them in my house and within my walls a memorial and a name better than that of sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that will not be cut off. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to Him, to love the name of the Lord and to be His servants, all who keep the Sabbath without profaning it and who hold fast to My covenant, I will bring them to My holy mountain and make them joyful in My house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all the nations. Thus declares the Lord God, who gathers the dispersed of Israel, I will gather to them still others besides those already gathered. Come, all you beasts of the field, eat greedily, all you beasts of the forest. Israel's watchmen are blind, they are all oblivious. They are all mute dogs, they cannot bark. They are dreamers lying around, loving to slumber. Like ravenous dogs, they are never satisfied. They are shepherds with no discernment. They all turn to their own way, each one seeking his own gain. Come, let me get the wine, let us imbibe the strong drink, and tomorrow will be like today, only far better. Isaiah 57 The righteous perish, and no one takes it to heart. Devout men are swept away, while no one considers that the righteous are guided from the presence of evil. Those who walk uprightly enter into peace. They find rest lying down in death. But come here, you sons of a sorceress, you offspring of adulterers and prostitutes. Whom are you mocking? At whom do you snarl and stick out your tongue? Are you not children of transgression, offspring of deceit, who burn with lust among the oaks under every luxuriant tree, who slaughter your children in the valleys under the clefts of the rocks? Your portion is among the smooth stones of the valley. Indeed, they are your lot. Even to them you have poured out a drink offering and offered a grain offering. Should I relent because of these? On a high and lofty hill you have made your bed, and there you went up to offer sacrifices. Behind the door and doorpost you have set up your memorial. Forsaking me, you uncovered your bed. You climbed up and opened it wide. And you have made a pact with those whose bed you have loved. You have gazed upon their nakedness. You went to Molech with oil and multiplied your perfumes. 
You have sent your envoys a great distance. You have descended even to Sheol itself. You are wearied by your many journeys, but you did not say, There is no hope. You found renewal of your strength, therefore you did not grow weak. Whom have you dreaded and feared, so that you lied and failed to remember me, or take this to heart? Is it not because I have long been silent that you do not fear me? I will expose your righteousness and your works, and they will not profit you. When you cry out, let your companies of idols deliver you. Yet the wind will carry off all of them. A breath will take them away. But he who seeks refuge in me will inherit the land and possess my holy mountain. And it will be said, Build it up, build it up, prepare the way, take every obstacle out of the way of my people. For thus says the one who is high and lifted up, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in a high and holy place, and with the oppressed and humble in spirit, to restore the spirit of the lowly and revive the heart of the contrite. For I will not accuse you forever, nor will I always be angry. For then the spirit of man would grow weak before me, with the breath of those I have made. I was enraged by his sinful greed, so I struck him and hid my face in anger. Yet he kept turning back to the desires of his heart. I have seen his ways, but I will heal him. I will guide him and restore comfort to him and his mourners, bringing praise to their lips. Peace, peace to those far and near, says the Lord, and I will heal them. But the wicked are like the storm-tossed sea, for it cannot be still, and its waves churn up mire and muck. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked." Isaiah 58 Cry aloud, do not hold back. Raise your voice like a ram's horn. Declare to my people their transgression, and to the house of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me, and delight to know my ways, like a nation that does what is right, and does not forsake the justice of their God. They ask me for righteous judgments, they delight in the nearness of God. Why have we fasted, and you have not seen? Why have we humbled ourselves, and you have not noticed? Behold, on the day of your fast, you do as you please, and you oppress all your workers. You fast with contention and strife, to strike viciously with your fist. You cannot fast as you do today, and have your voice be heard on high. Is this the fast I have chosen, a day for a man to deny himself, to bow his head like a reed, and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, and a day acceptable to the Lord? Isn't this the fast that I have chosen, to break the chains of wickedness, to untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and tear off every yoke? Isn't it to share your bread with the hungry, to bring the poor and homeless into your home, to clothe the naked when you see him, and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will come quickly. Your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry out, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and malicious talk, and if you give yourself to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light will go forth in the darkness, and your night will be like noonday. The Lord will always guide you. He will satisfy you in a sun-scorched land and strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins. 
you will restore the age-old foundations. You will be called Repairer of the Breach, Restorer of the Streets of Dwelling. If you turn your foot from breaking the Sabbath, from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, if you honor it by not going your own way or seeking your own pleasure or speaking idle words, then you will delight yourself in the Lord, and I will make you ride on the heights of the land and feed you with the heritage of your father Jacob. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Isaiah 59 Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have built barriers between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he does not hear. For your hands are stained with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, and your tongue mutters injustice. No one calls for justice, no one pleads his case honestly. They rely on empty pleas, they tell lies. They conceive mischief and give birth to iniquity. They hatch the eggs of vipers and weave a spider's web. Whoever eats their eggs will die, crack one open and a viper is hatched. Their cobwebs cannot be made into clothing, and they cannot cover themselves with their works. Their deeds are sinful deeds, and acts of violence are in their hands. Their feet run to evil. They are swift to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are sinful thoughts. Ruin and destruction lie in their wake. The way of peace they have not known, and there is no justice in their tracks. They have turned them into crooked paths. No one who treads on them will know peace. Therefore, justice is far from us, and righteousness does not reach us. We hope for light, but there is darkness, for brightness, but we walk in gloom. Like the blind, we feel our way along the wall, groping like those without eyes. We stumble at midday as in the twilight. Among the vigorous, we are like the dead. We all growl like bears and moan like doves. We hope for justice, but find none, for salvation, but it is far from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before you, and our sins testify against us. Our transgressions are indeed with us, and we know our iniquities. Rebelling and denying the Lord, turning away from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering lies from the heart. So justice is turned away, and righteousness stands at a distance. For truth has stumbled in the public square, and honesty cannot enter. Truth is missing, and whoever turns from evil becomes prey. The Lord looked and was displeased that there was no justice. He saw that there was no man. He was amazed that there was no one to intercede. So his own arm brought salvation, and his own righteousness sustained him. He put on righteousness like a breastplate, and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on garments of vengeance, and wrapped himself in a cloak of zeal. So he will repay according to their deeds. Fury to his enemies retribution to his foes, and recompense to the islands. So shall they fear the name of the Lord where the sun sets, and his glory where it rises. For he will come like a raging flood, driven by the breath of the Lord. The Redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who turn from transgression, declares the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit will not depart from you, and my words that I have put in your mouth will not depart from your mouth or from the mouths of your children and grandchildren, from now on and forevermore, says the Lord. Isaiah 60 
Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. For behold, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and His glory will appear over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather and come to you. Your sons will come from afar, and your daughters will be carried on the arm. Then you will look and be radiant, and your heart will tremble and swell with joy, because the riches of the sea will be brought to you, and the wealth of the nations will come to you. Caravans of camels will cover your land, young camels of Midian and Ephah, and all from Sheba will come bearing gold and frankincense and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar will be gathered to you. The rams of Nebaioth will serve you and go up on my altar with acceptance. I will adorn my glorious house. Who are these who fly like clouds? like doves to their shelters. Surely the islands will wait for me, with the ships of Tarshish in the lead, to bring your children from afar with their silver and gold, to the honor of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for He has glorified you. Foreigners will rebuild your walls, and their kings will serve you. Although I struck you in anger, yet in favor I will show you mercy. Your gates will always stand open. They will never be shut, day or night, so that the wealth of the nations may be brought into you, with their kings being led in procession. For the nation or kingdom that will not serve you will perish. It will be utterly destroyed. The glory of Lebanon will come to you, its cypress, elm, and boxwood together to adorn the place of my sanctuary, and I will glorify the place of my feet. The sons of your oppressors will come and bow down to you. All who reviled you will fall face down at your feet and call you the city of the Lord, Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas you have been forsaken and despised with no one passing through, I will make you an everlasting pride, a joy from age to age. You will drink the milk of nations and nurse at the breasts of royalty. You will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Instead of bronze, I will bring you gold. I will bring silver in place of iron, bronze instead of wood, and iron instead of stones. I will appoint peace as your governor and righteousness as your ruler. No longer will violence be heard in your land, nor ruin or destruction within your borders. But you will name your walls salvation and your gates praise. No longer will the sun be your light by day, nor the brightness of the moon shine on your night. For the Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your splendor. Your sun will no longer set, and your moon will not wane. For the Lord will be your everlasting light, and the days of your sorrow will cease. Then all your people will be righteous. They will possess the land forever. They are the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, so that I may be glorified. The least of you will become a thousand, and the smallest a mighty nation. I am the Lord. In its time I will accomplish it quickly. Isaiah 61 The Spirit of the Lord God is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and freedom to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of our God's vengeance, to comfort all who mourn, to console the mourners in Zion, to give them a crown of beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and a garment of praise for a spirit of despair. 
so they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They will rebuild the ancient ruins. They will restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Strangers will stand and feed your flocks, and foreigners will be your plowmen and vine dressers. But you will be called the priests of the Lord. They will speak of you as ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations, and you will boast in their riches. Instead of shame, my people will have a double portion, and instead of humiliation, they will rejoice in their share. And so they will inherit a double portion in their land, and everlasting joy will be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and iniquity. In my faithfulness I will give them their recompense, and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people the Lord has blessed. I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. My soul will exult in my God. For He has clothed me with garments of salvation, and wrapped me in a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom wears a priestly headdress, as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its growth, and as a garden enables seed to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Isaiah 62 For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not keep still until her righteousness shines like a bright light, her salvation like a blazing torch. Nations will see your righteousness, and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem in the palm of your God. No longer will you be called forsaken, nor your land named desolate. But you will be called Hephzibah, and your land Beulah. For the Lord will take delight in you, and your land will be his bride. For as a young man marries a young woman, so your sons will marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so your God will rejoice over you. On your walls, O Jerusalem, I have posted watchmen, they will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord shall take no rest for yourselves, nor give him any rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, Never again will I give your grain to your enemies for food, nor will foreigners drink the new wine for which you have toiled. For those who harvest grain will eat it and praise the Lord, and those who gather grapes will drink the wine in my holy courts. Go out, go out through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build it up, build up the highway, clear away the stones, raise a banner for the nations. Behold, the Lord has proclaimed to the ends of the earth, Say to daughter Zion, See, your Savior comes. Look, his reward is with him, and his recompense goes before him. And they will be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you will be called sought out, a city not forsaken. Isaiah 63 Who is this coming from Edom, from Basra with crimson-stained garments? Who is this robed in splendor, marching in the greatness of his strength? It is I, proclaiming vindication, mighty to save. Why are your clothes red, and your garments like one who treads the winepress? I have trodden the winepress alone, 
and no one from the nations was with me. I trampled them in my anger, and trod them down in my fury. Their blood spattered my garments, and all my clothes were stained. For the day of vengeance was in my heart, and the year of my redemption had come. I looked, but there was no one to help. I was appalled that no one assisted. So my arm brought me salvation, and my own wrath upheld me. I trampled the nations in my anger. In my wrath I made them drunk, and poured out their blood on the ground. I will make known the Lord's loving devotion and His praiseworthy acts, because of all that the Lord has done for us, the many good things for the house of Israel according to His great compassion and loving devotion. For He said, They are surely my people, sons who will not be disloyal. So He became their Savior. In all their distress he too was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and compassion he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. But they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he turned and became their enemy, and he himself fought against them. Then his people remembered the days of old, the days of Moses. Where is he who brought them through the sea with the shepherds of his flock? Where is the one who set his Holy Spirit among them, who sent his glorious arm to lead them by the right hand of Moses, who divided the waters before them to gain for himself everlasting renown, who led them through the depths like a horse in the wilderness so that they did not stumble? Like cattle going down to the valley, the Spirit of the Lord gave them rest. You led your people this way to make for yourself a glorious name. Look down from heaven and see, from your holy and glorious habitation. Where are your zeal and might? Your yearning and compassion for me are restrained. Yet you are our Father, though Abraham does not know us, and Israel does not acknowledge us. You, O Lord, are our Father. Our Redeemer from everlasting is your name. Why, O Lord, do you make us stray from your ways, and harden our hearts from fearing you? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. For a short while your people possessed your holy place, but our enemies have trampled your sanctuary. We have become like those you never ruled, like those not called by your name. Isaiah 64 If only you would rend the heavens and come down, so that mountains would quake at your presence, as fire kindles the brushwood and causes the water to boil to make your name known to your enemies, so that the nations will tremble at your presence. When you did awesome works that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled at your presence. From ancient times no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You welcome those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. Surely you were angry, for we sinned. How can we be saved if we remain in our sins? Each of us has become like something unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all wither like a leaf, and our iniquities carry us away like the wind." No one calls on your name or strives to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry, O Lord, beyond measure. Do not remember our iniquity forever. O oh, look upon us, we pray. We are all your people. 
Your holy cities have become a wilderness. Zion has become a wasteland, and Jerusalem a desolation. Our holy and beautiful temple, where our fathers praised you, has been burned with fire, and all that was dear to us lies in ruins. After all this, O Lord, will you restrain yourself? Will you keep silent and afflict us beyond measure? Isaiah 65 I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. To a nation that did not call my name, I said, Here I am, here I am. All day long I have held out my hands to an obstinate people, who walk in the wrong path, who follow their own imaginations. To a people who continually provoke me to my face, sacrificing in the gardens and burning incense on altars of brick, sitting among the graves, spending nights in secret places, eating the meat of pigs and polluted broth from their bowls. They say, Keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am holier than you. Such people are smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all day long. Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will pay it back into their laps, both for your iniquities and for those of your fathers, says the Lord. Because they burned incense on the mountains and scorned me on the hills, I will measure into their laps full payment for their former deeds. This is what the Lord says. As the new wine is found in a cluster of grapes, and men say, Do not destroy it, for it contains a blessing, so I will act on behalf of my servants. I will not destroy them all and I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and heirs from Judah. My elect will possess my mountains, and my servants will dwell there. Sharon will become a pasture for flocks, and the valley of Achor a resting place for herds, for my people who seek me. But you who forsake the Lord, who forget my holy mountain who set a table for fortune and fill bowls of mixed wine for destiny, I will destine you for the sword, and you will all kneel down to be slaughtered, because I called and you did not answer, I spoke and you did not listen. You did evil in my sight and chose that in which I did not delight. Therefore, this is what the Lord God says. My servants will eat, but you will go hungry. My servants will drink, but you will go thirsty. My servants will rejoice, but you will be put to shame. My servants will shout for joy with a glad heart, but you will cry out with a heavy heart and wail with a broken spirit. You will leave behind your name as a curse for my chosen ones and the Lord God will slay you. But to his servants he will give another name. Whoever invokes a blessing in the land will do so by the God of truth, and whoever takes an oath in the land will swear by the God of truth. For the former troubles will be forgotten and hidden from my sight. For behold, I will create new heavens and a new earth, the former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a joy, and its people to be a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sounds of weeping and crying will no longer be heard in her. No longer will a nursing infant live but a few days, or an old man fail to live out his years. For the youth will die at a hundred years, and he who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accursed. They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. 
No longer will they build houses for others to inhabit, nor plant for others to eat. For as is the lifetime of a tree, so will be the days of my people, and my chosen ones will fully enjoy the work of their hands. They will not labor in vain or bear children doomed to disaster. For they will be a people blessed by the Lord, they and their descendants with them. Even before they call, I will answer, and while they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. But the food of the serpent will be dust, they will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Isaiah 66 This is what the Lord says, Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me? Or where will my place of repose be? Has not my hand made all these things? And so they came into being, declares the Lord. This is the one I will esteem, he who is humble and contrite in spirit, who trembles at my word. Whoever slaughters an ox is like one who slays a man. Whoever sacrifices a lamb is like one who breaks a dog's neck. Whoever presents a grain offering is like one who offers pig's blood. Whoever offers frankincense is like one who blesses an idol. Indeed, they have chosen their own ways and delighted in their abominations. So I will choose their punishment, and I will bring terror upon them. Because I called, and no one answered. I spoke, and no one listened. But they did evil in my sight, and chose that in which I did not delight." You who tremble at his word, hear the word of the Lord. Your brothers who hate you and exclude you because of my name have said, Let the Lord be glorified, that we may see your joy. But they will be put to shame. Hear the uproar from the city. Listen to the voice from the temple. It is the voice of the Lord, repaying his enemies what they deserve. Before she was in labor, she gave birth. Before she was in pain, she delivered a boy. Who has heard of such as this? Who has seen such things? Can a country be born in a day, or a nation be delivered in an instant? Yet as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. Shall I bring a baby to the point of birth and not deliver it, says the Lord? Or will I who deliver close the womb, says your God? Be glad for Jerusalem, and rejoice over her, all who love her. Rejoice greatly with her, all who mourn over her, so that you may nurse and be satisfied at her comforting breasts. You may drink deeply and delight yourselves in her glorious abundance. For this is what the Lord says, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the wealth of nations like a flowing stream. You will nurse and be carried on her arm, and bounced upon her knees. As a mother comforts her son, so will I comfort you, and you will be consoled over Jerusalem. When you see, you will rejoice, and you will flourish like grass. Then the hand of the Lord will be revealed to his servants, but his wrath will be shown to his enemies. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. His chariots are like a whirlwind, to execute his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword the Lord will execute judgment on all flesh, and many will be slain by the Lord. Those who consecrate and purify themselves to enter the groves, to follow one in the center of those who eat the flesh of swine and vermin and rats, will perish together, declares the Lord. 
and I, knowing their deeds and thoughts, am coming to gather all nations and tongues, and they will come and see my glory. I will establish a sign among them, and I will send survivors from among them to the nations, to Tarshish, Put, and the archers of Lud, to Tubal, Javan, and the islands far away who have not heard of my fame or seen my glory. So they will proclaim my glory among the nations, and they will bring all your brothers from all the nations as a gift to the Lord, on horses and chariots and wagons, on mules and camels, to my holy mountain Jerusalem, says the Lord, just as the Israelites bring an offering in a clean vessel to the house of the Lord. And I will select some of them as priests and Levites, says the Lord. For just as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make will endure before me, declares the Lord, so your descendants and your name will endure. From one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all mankind will come to worship before me, says the Lord. As they go forth, they will see the corpses of the men who have rebelled against me. For their worm will never die. Their fire will never be quenched, and they will be a horror to all mankind.